Welcome back to Collider Live, the best show on the damn YouTubes. I'm Roxy Stryer, and across from me is the most evil of all time, Darina. Buenos dias. How's everyone doing? Thanks for being here. Happy Monday. I feel like you can't queen wave when I call you evil. What is a queen wave? Oh. Like yeah. slow? You gotta... I, I don't know. I, feel like I never should... know how to wave because my cello hand, it moves too much. And if you wave, you're going to have force lightning come out of your hand, I'm pretty sure. Mark Riley with that force lightning going on. Happy Star Wars week, everybody. Wow. You had to. You had to. Yes. I am excited. (laughs) So he's so happy. I am so excited. That came really soon. John Rook in the house. Happy Star Trek year, everybody. Yeah. What what is Star Trek year? uh, I don't know. I'm trying to count it. I mean, Picard does start in January. Picard, starts Picard January. got picked up for season two today. Yes. Yeah. So Picard is Discovery killing it already. Earlier this year. Uh, let me just ask you, Cody Hall in the booth, what did we hey. do that pissed you off so much you stopped the music multiple times? Well, he talked about Star Trek. So yeah. it was like, that was, oh. that was different than what Riley was talking about. <laughs> right. So oh. for comedic effect, I stopped the song. Oh, so it was jarring, <laughs> but I'm... Um, Cody, yeah, can you yeah. explain your joke? Totally. Yeah, I can keep doing that. Okay, yeah, thanks. Let's <laughs> go through all my sound bites and say why they're funny. The yeah. decision to stop the song. <laughs> You're not the only person I've made explain their jokes today. Uh, Alex was making some jokes earlier. Hey, what's he up? Just... It's your boy, Alex. Oh, that's See? incredible. <laughs> she keeps See? getting confused. She, she keeps thinking it's Dorian. You're so confused. Wait, but I don't get it. I, do it again. Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Alex. It's not <laughs> Alex. It's, it's, right. it's Dorian. Do, it's we got to do a side by side. Hold on. No. What? It's Alex, Alex. You go Dorian. first. Dorian. Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Alex. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Dorian. Oh, that's that's okay. a pretty good. Wait, right? What's up, guys? Well, Alex is a singer. That's why he's so good at it, Roxy. Again, again. What's up, guys? <laughs> no, I'm telling you, it's it, not Alex. This is this is I incredible. Gu- I guarantee you guys. I'll What's up, guys? It's your boy Alex. <laughs> 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 yeah, bring him in. Go check Riley. <laughs> bring him in. Dorian's here. not in the Where's office, Dorian? Roxy. No, it's he's Dorian's they out of the recorded office. him again. He called in. Oh, like boy. something's happening. Bring Dorian, yeah. bring Alex in here. It's not Alex. Make him say it while you're watching him. This is driving. No, no. Bring him in here. Yeah, to bring do him it. in. I know Mark yeah, is working right. on it. Yeah, that's incredible. Because yeah, Park's Rec is better him. than the office. That's, yeah, that's Alex in there. No, but when, then when you go rogue, it doesn't sound as good. You can only do that one sentence. Now you're okay, fine. So, guys, your boy Dorian? Wow. That's actually Dorian. Well, that is Dorian. Wait. <laughs> well, that was Alex. <laughs> This is the best. I cannot. I cannot. But you know what? I don't care about any of this because John Frusciante is back in the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Hey. And hey. it's the only oh. thing that Again? is on... You, you. Yeah, I'm, thank I'm you. telling you, make up your mind. In or out. I'm tired of him leaving. Here, and I then see guys, back I, uh, all the time. I, I played the music because <laughs> it was awkwardly quiet. Yeah, it's yeah, funny, that's, right? a good, that's a good joke. Really One of you guys joke. fight, really fight, good. fight about it. Let's, let's talk about this for a second. What's up, boys? Every <laughs> single person, like literally the internet has never been as united as they are right now with John Frusciante coming back. And leave it. To, to John yeah. Rolka yeah, yeah, yeah. to yeah. be the the first person, literally the first person, <laughs> on the except internet today. for Josh Klinghoffer's family, mm. who is not stoked on this. Dave Novacek might have something to say about it. Too. How do you pick? How do you pick <laughs> when you're John? How do you pick what you're annoyed about? It just it's just random. Because I don't it's pick a anything. Lot of it's stuff. organic. By the way, I'm not annoyed about Frasciante coming back. I think okay. it's great coming back. The fact is that... But, but you but have look, to be like, but... Yeah. People are excited, but John but, Roca has to say why you shouldn't be as excited. No. He's been gone from the band since 2007. Yeah. It's not like he took another year off. I get it. He's left the band two other times Thank before. You. But he came back. It's been over a decade. We can't let people change their mind? I don't like people who come back and leave and come back and leave and come back and leave. I'm not one of those people <laughs> that likes that, Roxy. Either you're in or you're out. You get one more chance to come back and then that's it. I got to be honest, it feels like you are taking a personal shot at somebody. I just don't know who yet. No, no, I'm talking about uh, the idea. I'm trying to think, can, like who, like, who, like, like, like Van Halen, right? Like when, when he keeps Josh coming. Josh No, no. Left John and came Cena. back. John Cena. John, John Cena. Ken Napsoff. Oh, left and came back. Mm-hmm. That's who you're taking shots at. No, we would never guys, take shots at those guys. His, but his sometimes you gotta go that, oh and group God. yourself and like you know do come your on. with your personal stuff and then you can come back and collaborate. Yeah, with his others. music was so he, he always leaves yeah. and has complaints about the band. He always bitches about Kiedis. He was bitches about Flea. He was Who bitch- doesn't bitch about Kiedis? Well, that's the thing. It's like either, you know, so. What happens during all that time? Then he comes back. Look, I'm happy he's back. He's fantastic. Certainly the best guitarist they've ever had. Yes. And certainly the band is never better than when he's in it. Thank but you. But maybe that's part of the thing is that you have to deal with the fact that he comes in and out. So I am happy he's back. I'm just like. How many more times can you keep doing this? What's like, wrong with you? Because you hurt my heart every what's, time you leave. What's what wrong you? about coming in and out all the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that. Muy bien. Good job, Mark. Muy bien. Thank you. Pregnancy. 
<laughs> but here, way to ruin here's my question house. for you though do you feel this way about like directors who retire and then they come back right. actors who do that mm-hmm. and do you not go want to see their work I, I think it's a case by case basis <laughs> it's actually Favre <laughs> And I hate it when Favre, Favre did it. Favre. Yeah. Yeah. I hate it when Favre did it. It yeah. drives me nuts. I don't like inconsistent. I like commitment. But they're artists. Aren't they allowed to go oh. do solo? and then Exactly. Co- like, what would you do right now I don't if, like if so. Beyonce was like, let's get Destiny's Child back together? Everyone would freak the fuck out. You'd be upset about it? You would be. Yeah. yeah, oh my God. Either break up or don't. You know why? Okay, what is that? Those girls just figured out how to live their lives without her. <laughs> and now they have to go back into the studio with her and be completely overwhelmed Dude. by her because you know she's not going to let Kelly Rowland get a solo. John, they, they, get a she, role they, he's, he's actually not wrong. He's, he's actually he's, not wrong. Here's where he's not wrong. They have st- Here's where he is wrong. They have still not figured out how to live without her. <laughs> Our, okay. Kelly was successful for a while. Yeah, no, totally. But are you guys watching The Masked Singer? Oh, no. no. Definitely it's not. It's a question not I don't say very often. No, yeah. well, Alex, no. you're my best shot. No. no? All right. <laughs> so, Cody, explain that choice to me. So, you decided that was a stinker. Because the show sucks, Rock. Oh! 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 He's Yikes. not wrong. Wow. Yikes. I would fart at that John show. John Fashanti's well. my friend. Oh. God, Cody. Damn. Uh, but Michelle Williams was on, th- not the actress, Destiny's oh, yeah. Child, Michelle, mm-hmm. was on Mask Singer. And I went back and I've been watching. Dude, she when she gets eliminated, the premise of the show. Do you guys know what's up yeah. with the oh, show? Yeah. When she gets eliminated from the show, she, the amount of love she has for being able to sing, she's like, people actually listen to me again. Like, it is they, bro. It's crushing. It's yeah, tough. like but poor that's gotta, Michelle. Like, could, could you imagine uh, the working with someone like Beyonce as like you're basically you're in a trio? No, you're a backup singer. No, for years and years not. and years. Yeah, she wasn't. She, she shouldn't be because they're both very talented, Kelly and her. But the, that's the thing. But the they be- re- got reduced. At to. the beginning, Destiny Child was five women, managed by Beyonce's dad and mom. Momager, yeah. Right. Eventually, you don't hear dad and mom often. No, you don't. Stipulate like mom and dad. Eventually, the other two, <laughs> two of the girls, sued Destiny Child. They felt that they were focusing on Beyonce too much. And then they left the group. It was a big deal. Those three, those other two that stayed, Michelle Williams, Kelly Rowland, they were dedicated to her. Dedicated to her. They put up with all that crap because she made herself the star. Yeah. And they rolled with it. I think Beyonce. They rolled with it. Oh, hello. I like nailed it. Dad jokes, really? Okay. Yeah. I like Beyonce. Hey, you got a ding. I think Beyonce should be taking care of those ladies. What, however, you don't she think she can. is? I don't know if she is. You don't think the same thing happened with NSYNC and Justin Timberlake? I think JT should be taking, but Joy Fatone went off and did his own thing. JC, I don't know what he's up to. Because he's the best singer out of them all. JC or yeah. Justin? JC. Yeah, I think I agree. Mm-hmm. JC, man. Look, I can talk Where about Where the hell is JC? Not, not like Justin, and he's like even more the, the better singer well, than Justin Timberlake. Let's check with the Backstreet Boys. So What's happening there? They were in Vegas. They were in Vegas for a while. Yeah. They, they no, they did a Doritos commercial. They did. Did you guys, mm-hmm. did you grow up into <laughs> boy bands? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Because uh, I, no, because no. I, no, me at all. New no, because I block? didn't grow up in, with New Kids on the Block, but my oh. friends did. Yeah. But Never. then, and then I got into, you know, I know like Backstreet Boys and, 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 and Sync yeah. hits, but I don't know all of the other stuff. You know who should be in a boy band? Who? Camille Nanjiani. Holy shit. Nice segue. Did you see nice. that? Nice. Yo, happy, thank you so much. Happiest of uh, Mondays. Bye, bye, bye. Like, whoa. Yeah, no, what, what is that? How did he do that? I, no, no. Cody and Alex, you must not know what's happening if oh, this is the screen we that know. we're looking we're at. Just, we're oh, you just know. The so you saw it as well. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay. It's, it's so yeah. Uh, Kelly, can you handle this? Michelle, can you handle this? Beyonce, can you handle this? Because none of us can handle this. Because I cannot handle this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for those of you listening right now, I you got to switch up over. I to lick the screen. <laughs> at least look at Camille's uh, Instagram because I, 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 this is such a transformation. He, I wish he did a before and after slide because, I, well, I guess I never knew what was under that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Here's like, I don't know where he but started. But you didn't think it was that. But I did not think that's what no, it was. No, because that's, yeah. I mean... Should we just all this time? Should we just talk about this for the there. two hours of the show? <laughs> what? I, here's John. Here's what I just heard, and I tried to move on, but I can't. This is what John just said. 
Here's the problem. No, I was joking. You I was trying to get. Me, oh, I was trying to mess with you. Oh, I thought there was more to that sentence. I could not no, wait. No, no. Look, you either be, you know, you're ripped or, you're not. Or, you, or you don't. Or you don't. I'm like, what's this like going back and forth what between being see? a regular guy and wow. ripped? You must hate Christian Bale then. <laughs> Stick to one say, week, Christian. Why'd you get rid of that? I don't know. They, up I wanted before and after. Oh, oh before look at and what after. He was. There's yeah. one. He definitely had a nerd bod before. Yeah. Let's take a look at that. Like yeah. a mini dad bod. Yeah. Oh, you know what? oh, God. Oh, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I really... <laughs> Look at the veins on his biceps, I know. man. Here's what I like about his How comment, though. Happen? He writes like that the f- only reason he was able to do this is because of money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Because I love that so he's true. honest about it. it. Because he, what he's saying is, dear fans, you guys cannot accomplish what I accomplished. No. <laughs> Do not try this. Not in a mean way, but no, just like, not. if you want to look like me, get richer. Yeah. Or, yeah. or find somebody to pay for have your body. Have a wow. chef and this a trainer not, and, fa- and a facialist and a masseuse and whatever the it's hell. It's not realistic. Has to look food like that. Yeah. Do you have to buy to to. to and he had a year. That? He had oh a year God. to be training every day. Like it's not realistic if you work a nine to five, no. let alone a eight to midnight. It was however many hours you're working a week to look like people. that. It was literally his job to look like that. That's why he had to train every day. What did I just miss? <laughs> That's John's <laughs> our, our comedic timing today. What happened? He, what that's what I, I tell people. That's why I can't look like that. I got a nine to six. <laughs> you know, I got podcasts. I can't get in the gym and work out. Do you guys yeah. think if we had though his trainer and chef and everybody and, and everything yeah. he has, we would be able to look like that? Because I don't. Yeah, I oh, definitely would. Oh, we would, would be ripped. Are you kidding? Yeah. In the military, when I this is I was one ninety five. I look like that coming you out of the military. One ninety five. Pictures or yeah, it didn't happen. Mm. Where are your shirtless pictures? That's true. Done? I should. I should. Well, I wasn't one of those people that took those kinds. Of, I you didn't take thirsty photos. My, I, I body dysmorphia. I think I look like John Goodman all the time. Like <laughs> even the old though John you were Goodman. ripped. Yeah, yeah. Or John Candy. The old John Candy. I, I look. Like, I feel like I look that big all the time. Just looked at Camille and said, "I looked exactly like that." And then you in, just said in the what military. You just said. And I was 19 years old when I was. One I want to see pictures. You don't all have right. any. I'll come find some. Good. I want. I want to check it out. Yeah, I definitely think the military does that. I could look like that because have you ever have you ever had a trainer? Uh, yes, I have. And do mm. you look much better after like a month? Yes, but I hate it. Mm. Right, yeah. but you could do it. Yes, if you I just had don't to. Want to. If you, <laughs> yeah, that's it's, the other thing. Like, it's rough. He's literally not only are they paying for it, but he's getting paid to do True. that. True. True. Yeah. If I was getting paid to look that good, then that'd be cool for sure. And at some point, you yeah. know, when you're in better shape and it's actually not miserable to work out. Mm-hmm. Have you? Has that ever happened? Yes, you guys were like, you you run every day for a little bit, and then like. I don't know, maybe after a month and a half of running every day on that, finally there's that day where it's like, oh, this actually doesn't suck dick. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm never going to run. Like, that's just for, that, I'm not going to do that. What? But but working out regularly. What's up with your thumb? What, were you looking at me for, for something like- Do you like to work out? Do you, No, I don't. Yeah, you don't, it's not a big deal. <laughs> Mark, Wait, the nice, it's not a big deal to you. The nicest It's not way. a big deal. It is a big, like when you, look, after the new year, I got to do something. <laughs> So, but what's something though? It's w- at least work out. At least break a sweat. Right. At least eat better. This because is... I'm just I'm eating all the the holiday foods. Yeah. No. Yeah. And yeah. sitting around going, Mark, you know what? This is your Fuck family it. in your head. You look great. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Roxy. You look fine. I'm Thank telling you. you. It I'm... might be the heroes and villains shirts that we're wearing right now. That's it might really be the bombers good, that that's... are making everybody look I so mean, good. That's... You are on point today. Thank yeah. you so much. So many good segues, nice. Roxy, Yo, today. Heroes, villains for the win, guys. Heroes and villains. I'm like completely obsessed with the quality of their clothes. Yeah. So freaking soft. I want to see the back of it, but I got to tell you, you're blocked by a microphone. It Damn said it. death, and then it went away. Death is not defeat. Defeat, yes. Uh, That's what that claim on, sure. Yeah. These are pretty awesome, and if you guys want to be cool like us, make sure you go to heroesvillains.com. Also, because we love you so much, 10% off if you use the code LIVE10. And I know it's the holiday season right now, so you guys want to get these gifts by Christmas or by Hanukkah. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to make sure that you get them in for your family, your friends, yourself, if you're buying yourself a present, which there's nothing wrong with that. I do it every single year. Make sure that you order them by today because today is the cutoff, right, Mark? Right, yep. It's you got to get them today in today. To get it, yep, get them by the holidays. Yeah. Today is the day. There's also, uh, it's Force Friday stuff, so there's badass Star Wars, Mandalorian yeah. stuff going on, short sleeves, long sleeve, all that great stuff. Again, Live 10 is the code. Go to heroesvillains.com, 10% off. Order today. So you get you it by the buy, holidays. You got to buy. You got to buy. It's like that. What? <laughs> it's like that. Chimpokamon. Yeah. It's like, like what? South Park. You don't remember that up, uh, episode no. of South Park where they're where they're all making fun of Pokemon? 
What, no. what, 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 Cody what, what, remembers. Cody's what? like, what do you mean? What? What do you mean? Well, they're making fun of like yeah, people having to buy this. the Pokemon. It's a pretty yeah. good episode. Chim Pokemon. You want to know what? I I feel like I have no memory at all sometimes because of the amount of content that I watch. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure I saw it. But how do you? But I don't because re- you're so good at interviewing people. How do you retain that information? But do you just do you just throw everything away that's um, in your brain and keep just that one person's like resume? I don't understand no, how your brain works. I guess curiosity and research, man. Like. It's not like I – there's the people who I have all of the stuff already on because I've just been such a massive fan. And then there's people I've been a fan of their work, and then you dive in deeper beforehand. Uh, my memory will span like a week. Okay. So <laughs> as long as I start Now you that, know how your brain good. works. Are you like Will Ferrell old school? You're like, when it's done, you're like, Ugh, where did all that come from? I don't even know. Kind of. It's it out, and then it's Ugh. like, if you ask me about it a minute later, like, remember that question you asked about this? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Nope. Uh, speaking of interviews, Trisha Helfer coming on hey. today. Oh my God. Whoa, guys. Uh, this is huge. We have different fandoms we're coming we from, do. though. We do. Because, yo, everybody knows hashtag Save Lucifer was started by me. Right. Right, John? You knew I, that? I, I knew that, that right now. Oh, I thought it was Rachel Harris. For I you. did it. Okay, sorry. Uh, and you guys are big Battlestar people. Yes, yes. we oh, are. We are huge, huge BSG yeah. nerds. Yeah, so really, really truly excited one about of this one. The best shows on TV ever. If you guys have questions for her, then put them in the chat now. Uh, put them in the chat throughout, and we'll try to make sure we get to some of those today. Uh, and a lot of other news, guys, going on. Uh, I feel like every Monday, the weekend was so kind to us. Mm. Like we, There's so much stuff that breaks over the weekend and so many uh, different things that we see. We will be talking Watchmen, so of course. So many shows oh, yeah. we've seen, yes. I, I, oh, my God. I cannot wait to talk about that because I have seen some John Rokas on the internet, a.k.a. people who will say, no, no. What? what? Just, about what? Just about you complaining like the, about things everybody else likes. John like But you liked it, yeah. Mm. By the way, you didn't mention her Hallmark Christmas movies, which I'm a big fan of Trisha Alpha. Really? So, I'm a sick addict to Hallmark Christmas Damn. movies. Damn. What's your favorite Christmas movie well, that she's in? Sh- uh, uh, what's the one? Operation Christmas. She's great in Operation Christmas. Really? Yeah. So are you are Do you, you watch with your lady? She hates them. What? So no proposing You're the romantic comedy that. fan in the household. Yeah, then. I am the romantic she's comedy. Not. She is not. Oh, well, she did like yesterday. What's your favorite romantic comedy, John? Oh, it's when Harry met Sally. That's untouchable. Yes. That's untouchable. It's pretty funny. Wow. Right. I never thought of yesterday as a as a rom com, but I guess that's what it is. It is. I like mm. that movie. Last Christmas, by the way, Roxy crossed a hundred million dollars over the weekend. A hundred wow. million dollars worldwide on a thirteen million dollar budget. An argument I never use. And what is it at Rotten Tomatoes right now? Oh, well, you Scrooges. Although that doesn't mean it's good it. because Transformers. So. Genuine, good. genuine question, Cody and Alex. Money. Last Charlie's Christmas, Angels make Rotten Tomatoes. Million dollars. I'll tell you that one. Oh, I want to oh, see what this shit. is. Do you want to go away from his abs? I don't. I uh, honestly no. don't want to go away from his abs. Can you abs, just leave it there the whole I, show? Oh, the big sick is a good one. We can make it our desktop wallpaper. Yay! Yeah. Oh, Great idea, Cody. Oh my god! All right, so Alex, look at that score. Cool. Yeah, so look good. at that. That but even the chest hair is perfect. Could I have a real eighty-one uh, percent on that uh, fan? I see a forty-seven over there. Wow, with if you the people judge that those you, bitter critics. You, do you call yourself a critic? Ooh. I have to. I have to. But I also know. I also know what's wrong with my group of critics. Yeah, that movie was. <laughs> woof was woof. It was. Is that you what you were gonna said say? It. Um, I was going back and forth between garbage, oh. woof, <laughs> a oh. lot of different things. But then garbage. I feel bad because I think the people in it are really great. Yeah. Well, just the movie. There's itself. still a, a lot of movies where the cast and crew is great, and the movie is just not as good. It yeah. happens. The movie itself, a movie I think that we all believe has the potential to be great. Top Gun, guys. Hey, yes. Yo, this Top Gun uh, down, two down. trailer dropped. Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun ready to blow our socks off, whatever you want to call it. So impressive. So impressive to me. Oh, that's why you did that. I was wondering why you had multiple glasses on the table. John Roca, ready for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Initial thoughts on the trailer. Darina, how you feeling? Highway to no. the Danger Zone. Sorry. Uh, I just love the okay. song and I saw it played live by Kenny Loggins at the Hollywood Bowl and we all freaked out. It was really, really good times. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, I do not care about Top Gun usually, uh, except for the music, honestly. And that's how they keep manipulating me with these trailers, with the awesome music. So that kind of pisses me off. But I'm going to go see it. I mean, I like the original. I just hope that they keep the all of the homoerotic stuff. Oh, I, got I gotta it. say, I don't like your take on this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on the table. Because be you, you loved it so much? Yeah. Uh, Mark Riley, what are your thoughts? Oh, I love this trailer. I love the first trailer. I love this trailer. I didn't know that they could surprise me with a Top Gun Maverick movie. Mm. Because when they said they were going back to it, I was like, 
Yeah, I want to see it. But where are we at with, uh, you know, I know there's a the the Air Force has changed. The Navy has changed. So I hope that they're going to, and it looks like they're going to delve into that, and I can't wait. And I love, it has all the hallmarks of a Top Gun. There is what I think is the callback to the volleyball scene yes. with the football scene. Men's be, shirts are off. People are, you good. know, everybody's going crazy with that. Mm-hmm. And then we have is all Camille the Camille Maggiani stuff. in that He's scene? In, he right. should yeah. be. He should okay. be in He's, every he, scene now where there's shirtless people. For exactly. the future of movies, when a man takes his shirt off, they're just going to superimpose that shirt, th- that on them. Damn. It's pretty damn good. But, uh, yeah, And Henry it. Cavill's mustache, too. Yeah. Yeah. John, yeah. talk to me. What do you want me to say? I want you to tell me how you feel Did about the trailer. Did you under the danger zone trailer. or what? Yeah. Were you I have had an erection for the last four hours because of that <laughs> damn trailer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 6 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> Deal with it, Cody. Show me your abs, Cody. <laughs> I, I've been watching that trailer since 6 a.m. this morning and over and over and over again. Because I tell you, it isn't just a fun trip, nostalgia trip back to the 80s. This looks like an actually badass movie. Yeah. It really actually looks good. Which is what you good. wanted, yeah. right? And let me give you a oh, clue. Oh, get off of its jock strap. You didn't even lay it. L- L- I L- did <laughs> like it. I just wasn't like, holy shit. Like, guys, I grew up, I, I did not yeah, grow up in this country. I, I just don't get excited about movies. There was like jets in Mexico. I just don't care. Just There's no don't jets care. in Mexico. Right. Wait, 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 <laughs> exactly. There's no fighter jets. jets. I was like, I don't even know if that's real. <laughs> Mexican airport. We don't have those planes. I don't know. Yeah, you love alien movies and like Dracula and stuff. Yeah, Good point. Yeah, because I El Diablo is in Mexico. That's place. right. Yeah, yeah. And in space. But that's where he um, is. <laughs> all over the place. What are we talking but about the, right now? The nostalgia <laughs> of it all. But like, let me tell you, because I'm all younger. Well, uh, I'm younger than most of you. Uh, 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 I am younger than him. I'm still. I'm uh, older than him, rather. But like, what? I remember what when the trailer. What was that sentence? What are you trying to say? <laughs> I'm trying to say. I remember when the original trailer came out and the same things that sold us on the movie when we were kids or teenagers watching in the movie, watching that trailer in the theaters back in the 80s are the same things that's selling you now. It's the fight sequences, the dog fighting stuff, the jets, all of that is badass. Then you throw in the fact that Maverick is still a rebel. Yeah. Maverick, I, I never thought I'd be asked back. They're called orders, Maverick. Ooh, yes! This, Bring that's it to a great, me! But that's is a this great like line. your dream? It's a great line. Is this your dream reboot specifically because of Tom Cruise? I haven't seen Iceman yet. Right. And Iceman's in the movie. Uh-huh. And I imagine Iceman's in that casket. So yeah. I'm going to get something. But I wish Val Kummerl didn't have that throat cancer. I wish Val Kummerl was still 100% to have them have a back and forth again 30 and, years later or and, 40 years later. And do his clenching of the yeah. teeth scene. You got to do that. I yeah. S- Speak, also, For by the way. somebody who doesn't like it, you seem to have a lot of thoughts on it. A lot of knowledge on the original to, yeah. Top Gun. No, I like it. I didn't love it. What am I supposed to do? What I do you know? want from me, Roxy? Love, love it. Exactly what you You need to doing. scream and yell. <laughs> Let me you want ask me to you get more something. excited? Yeah. Okay, Let me ask the three of you something. You saw the trailer. You see Jennifer Connelly is at that funeral wearing black. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Is she Iceman's ex-wife or widow, or is she Iceman's sister? Oh. But what does that have to do with her wearing black? Anybody who because goes to a funeral there. wears black. Yeah, but why is she there? Who is she? Yeah. Tom and her have a relationship. Um, I just meant the, the uh, To our listeners, just... there's an important poll going on at our Collider Live Twitter. Uh, what should Roca do about his now four-hour erection? Go to the doctor or watch <laughs> Top Gun 2 trailer? Watch Please Tom, vote. I don't yeah. think watching the Top Gun 2 trailer is going to help the erection. <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, it, it should say turn off Top Gun 2 trailer. Yeah, if you want to sustain it, keep mm, watching that trailer, buddy. Somebody in the chat did say, I think it was Mark Ballam that said, a damn Viagra. <laughs> damn. <laughs> Yo, here's the thing. We're Winding back, I don't know, a few weeks ago, I think Cody, it was the two of us who were like, we do not care about this movie coming out in any way. Uh-huh. Cody, Cody, did you say that with me? No. Was it? <laughs> we, we were asked if we cared about this, and it was like, no. About not Top Gun? Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I was uh, about to punch the wall and grab I'm, it. Mm, somebody rewind the tape. I remember I said, mm, and Cody, but I told you that I can't remember anything past a week, That's so true. I, I could have made this all but up. But have you changed your mind? Um, so this trailer to me was like, Okay, I'm actually ready for this. Nice. This is something I really want, which is exactly what trailers are supposed to do. Mm-hmm. They're they're not supposed to be for the diehard super fans who would go see it anyway. It's supposed to be for the people who are on the fence about whether or not that they think that this is going to be a good movie or they want to see it. And that was me. I was kind of like, mm, I'll see it because of my job, but who knows if I'm actually interested in this. And now I'm like, wow, that was fire. Nice. This trailer was so so good. Uh, I I listened to it in my car after I. Um, watched in my house. I've also seen it a couple times. My erection's doing a little better than yours. Oh, but that's good. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's and w- listening to it with like the sound in my car, which is my version of surround sound. Did you um, drive faster because of it? I, no, I wasn't driving. Oh. I was watching it. Oh. You were you watching, watching, not, not a very listening. Good driver. Okay. I, can't. <laughs> I thought you were listening to it. Okay. 
Okay. Whoa. Okay. I was like, Who are you trying to kill right now? I'm definitely not watching anything while I'm driving anymore. Jeez. Uh, this is playing though, and I'm just like doing the head Danger thing. Zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally doing the head. So, bob. Roxy, what was it? That got you around to this one. Like, is it some of the aerial stunts? Some I just more the story. T- the timing of it was so yeah. great. Like, okay. I, like really well edited. You yeah, mean? it was well edited, but like just sp- certain lines um, and like yeah, the aerial stuff and just badassery going through. And he's so good. It's impossible not to like him, which yeah. is challenging. He's a he's a star. He's he is he's, he is one of the last official movie stars, yeah. and probably mm-hmm. that there ever will be. He's a nice guy too, apparently. He really a is. A lot of people. Yeah, I've heard that too. The Scientology thing. I know. I, yeah. I know. I'm not supposed to bring it up, but like well, it just. Well, look, why Elizabeth are you not Moss gets away with I, it? No, I say the same thing about her every time okay. I mention her. I, I thought he because yeah, Handmaid's Tale is like my favorite. According to a bunch of the magazines at Ralph's, when I'm checking out, he has left Scientology. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> like. I don't think so. The we choir and it you is, know. It is what it is. It is what it is. But why is that Scientology weird? But like then the I just kind of group them with the other religions. Why is because how they weirder? treat women. What? Yeah, but other oh, religions treat people I have a problem really with. badly too I have a problem with that yeah yeah that's right, but it's all religions it's not just Scientology. I don't think all religions treat women <laughs> like that well no I mean all religions can is my point like like it's just a matter of like what the person that is religious is choosing to do with their beliefs right no, no it's not so much based a religion, on your the religion is different right based on your religion is different I, that's what I think I mean I, I, that's a I, don't know. Know. <laughs> I like that cast best. Can like? I ask? Can I ask a question? Do you like? I know this is y'all's show, but can I ask a question? Yeah. Of course. Oh, you Alex, can always ask a question, Rocco. Why Top do you say it like that? Like we don't make it. You're on the show. No, that's out of respect. It's not a, anything. Um. Alex, what's up? It's opening up against your In the Heights. Oh! 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 What are we gonna do now, okay, son? X-Pac. What are we gonna do now? I'm gonna watch In the Heights. You son of a bee. Yeah. I was I'm gonna take you. I mean, you are my before. official plus one for Top Gun, Alex. Oh. Uh, um, just take me now. Oh wait, no, right. I, I'm sorry. No, yeah, I'll take you, Riley. Wait, why did you think of really quick though, Roca, about uh, Miles, Miles Teller? Because I, I feel like mustache. I feel like he injected himself with like Anthony Edwards DNA. Yeah, like, this what, right? what is that I about? He looks sweat. like so Goose's sweaty. son. The yeah. mustache should exactly. have its own Twitter account. Yeah. <laughs> Right, that's a, that's a proper use mustache. of a mustache. I wonder if movie mustaches should have a Twitter account, and it should be obviously a picture of Henry Cavill, Definitely. and then after that, <laughs> all the other mustaches to come. Kenneth Branagh's in Murder in the Orient Express. Yeah. Shared universe of <laughs> mustaches. There's some pretty good yeah. ones. Wow, yeah. we should do a ranking of mustaches on this show. I like that. I, idea. I, I mean, Magnum PI wins, FYI. Okay. But well, oh, well, you're going TV. Tom Selleck has the best mustache I, we've ever seen. Th- homie, Is there I anybody agree. better? I agree, obviously. What are you yeah, I, no, I'm, I'm kind of with you, okay. but then I, for some reason mm-hmm. I went to Three Men and a Baby oh. and mm-hmm. still rocking that mustache. Still Tom Selleck. Sam, Sam Elliott. So, oh, Sam Elliott. Sam really Elliott's a good mustache. mustache. Too. mustache to beat. Yeah. Damn. Ron Swanson, man. Oh, Swanson's a mustache. Damn. All the mustaches. Oh, yeah, the tombstone mustaches. My, oh. Michael oh. Bean's mustache in the abyss. Well, Is we must dash into a break right now. Oh, Oh, look Best at that. one yet, guys. Just it amazing really segues good. today, Roxy. You are on a roll. Thank you so much. When we come back, we'll definitely be talking Watchmen. Don't worry, we're going to do non spoiler and then we will do spoiler. We'll let you guys know. Also, we got some Power Rangers stuff happening. Uh, and then Trisha Helper, as I said, coming at the last half hour. We'll see you guys after this break. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Dory. Boom! Boom, 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 boom! Dead ass.
listen. Jack. You listen, Jack. And you better listen, Jack. What a twist. Sit down! Sit down! Sit down! Want some cookies? Want a glass of milk? bum because a uh, little behind this uh, scenes thing when they want to tell me we're alive they put the collider live thing up but i wanted to keep looking at camille so there Is that we how go. you say it just start putting Cam- that up camille nanjiani camille or camille how do you say his name camille name? nanjiani camille, camille? Ah, i believe so am i, I don't know camille. i thought it was camille nanjiani but camille camille i just camille. read as you know stuff in Spanish, I'm like, who might? I don't know. Yeah. Things are hard for you to pronounce, and things are hard for me to pronounce. Because Boston, like, because of the I grew up thing, with so right? many. The, oh well, nodules. But Boston, like, I, oh, oh my God, there's so many words that I say that people are like, what? Right. Yeah. I, I've tried to kick. I've lived here for ten years, and I still haven't kicked them. Is it the a a e sound more so? What's the, the e part? No, like the a like. Well, if he's saying it's, com- I say Camille. And you're saying it's Camille. Camille. I think it's Camille. Camille. Mm-hmm. Camille. Because the AI is Does it matter, me, though, bring up what the his name is? If I yep, try to there do, it is. <laughs> Camille. If I try to do eh, it's You can see ah, the pronunciation ah, right there right across there. the chest. Camille. Mm, I see it I'll now. I'll pronounce you it see however it? he yeah. wants me to do you guys if he looks think, like that. Real question. Do you guys think he put on some kind of oil? For of this picture. Oh, of course, for the picture. It was picture. all lighted. It was, this is a professional yeah, I mean, he got he got a spray tan. You know, yeah. it's like a whole Someone makeup. Someone just take this while you're sitting at the gym. Yeah. he weird that we have, like, like the abs? Like <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I wouldn't know. I've never seen mine. What? So I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, like under, under, <laughs> under whatever you got going on. You mean they're on, there, there's like but what? something. <laughs> I, uh... I was going to say we have like pox. Like they're like little sections of them. Like why do we have that? What did evolution Nature. do that? Nature. I guess, man. They look so and nice. Like, isn't it we weird that, I think, that I think having like squares on you is sexy right why mm-hmm. do we think that Nobody i mean knows. it, you know? it looks really <laughs> nice i don't know why john Qu- Qu- feels me Qu- the conversation it's because, there, you, see, not it's, all it's because you see the muscles in the skeleton part more yeah. that's hot to me well, is look, it we, oh look at through our ti- our life in sculpture right we've seen like david exactly and all, they have those but the, but not all abs are similar like is there 
off center, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So some abs are like straight lined, mm-hmm. some abs are off center. It just depends on how well, you body. Well, they're all built. beautiful and lickable. Absolutely. Yeah. All, oh, whoa. Lickable. All right. All right. All right. Fair. Should fucking do it, man. Fair. Yeah. Licking his abs. In like my if body. an alien, a xenomorph had abs, you would lick the abs. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not Dorina really into probably. fucking xenomorphs, but why not? Really? I mean, I, just said I feel like that would be. Isn't that more like yeah. bestiality? You like jump yeah. to fucking. I just like I don't. Abs, or does it count as bestiality if you're in space? I truly don't know. I've asked no. this question many a times because, like, I'm not gonna fuck an animal, obviously. Right. But if there was an alien, I think I might. Right. So are they an animal? I don't know. An no. Animal Kirk or are they? Was not into bestiality. Kirk yes, he was. was banging ladies of different species. It doesn't make him into bestiality. Speciality. Yeah, but at the... T- He's not a species. At the time, I don't True. know, man. Like, if something came down what and looked fucked? like any of... The, like, even if they looked like anything happening on Mandalorian or any of the things that we've seen that... L- like, it's still not a human, so is it... Well, on this Can very you you show, Roxy, you did no, ask... No, I would. And in this very show, I think you did clear. ask if you would fuck adult Yoda, so... I did ask that, and I said, and I said yes. What about aliens like Starman <laughs> that there take you go, on? So you would fuck a xenomorph. That they take on the image of a man, like in Starman. Mm. Would you? Would you? Well, okay. Would you With be Karen Allen, thing. and think, and bang that alien? I'm also wondering about shapeshifters. It's like a whole different thing because, like, if you can look one way, but then you shape it. You also, you can I, change it up. Probably. You'd bang a clean. At this point, you guys know I would bang a lot. Of oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So so the Klingon walked into your room. Here comes Jay Washington bursting through the door. What was yeah. that? <laughs> there is. I tweeted about this this weekend, but you guys know what's going on with the penis fish, right? Yes. I still don't know what why we didn't that, go with the title for that, but y'all, you know, y'all, y'all know what's up with the penis fish. Mm-hmm. Also, FYI, uh, I like. I love pork and chicken is saying it's not bestiality if they are sentient, in my opinion. Well, Which okay. makes sense. Right. So That's there you go. That's a good go. point. Mm. So but back how to do we so know fish something's penis. not like controlling their mind? We don't mm. know. Yeah, so these penis fishes <laughs> washed up uh, in California. Yeah. There was like hundreds of them. I'd never seen one before. I'd never seen one. I've still never seen one in person. Yeah. Get more and more curious every Definitely. day. Definitely. <laughs> they just want to see how it feels and yeah. when you hold it. But mm. I was more curious... Before I watched it move. Have you guys been watching these videos? Oh, yeah. You see what it does? Mm Mm-hmm. Disgusting. Ooh, I want to see. But I tweeted out asking. uh, This was a legitimate question. I didn't mean it as a joke. I honestly wanted to know if we thought as a society that anybody's ever banged a penis fish. Like, taken a penis fish and tried to put it in your one of your holes. Whichever hole. Yeah. Um. And I got to tell you guys, it was a resounding yes. Right. Like it, I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what this says about my followers or what or this says about our world, but everybody wrote back being like, absolutely, somebody has tried to do this. Absolutely. Just quick poll in here, John. What do you think? Somebody's tried it. Humans are disgusting. Someone's tried it. Do you think it worked? <laughs> Did it stay hard like that? Yeah. It worked. You didn't think it like what? what it, how does it move though? Is there Finn a video that we can it. see? <laughs> it does. Well, yeah, that's a good point. Let's get yeah. Tom on the phone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what do you think, Mark? Probably, I think in the history of uh, of the human race, yeah, I think somebody probably had some fun with the penis fish. Adrena, I, I for sure, somebody's done it. What if you? If, so say we're like, if you find that in like you're in like back in the day, like caveman, like, caveman time. That's times, what I'm thinking about. Like, why wouldn't you? But, but why would you? Because it's better, it's easier to control than like a person. I, you don't have to deal with the drama it? afterwards. If I may, I'd like to quote the great Dorina Arellano, who said, Ooh. "Try everything. You guys, you should experiment with everything in bed." Mm-hmm. So I fear a penis fish is an experiment in bed. And don't knock it till you try it. Exactly. Right? Though my only thing is like, if if the fish penis knows it's consensual, right? Like that would be nice. <laughs> I wonder otherwise. If, like, you imagine, have to ask the penis fish. Yeah. Imagine yeah. if it hated being inside you. Like, like it's got a brain. It's like, get me out of here. What Where's if it the turns into? What if it now, mutates Cody? into a whole other animal inside your hole? Oh, that'd be amazing. Because okay. you guys have seen Blue Planet, I know, right? Yeah. I know yeah. I brought this up, but I'm done with it. Speaking of <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I kind of jumped off too. Yeah, so, oh, here's my stop. Well, <laughs> Speaking of really weird dongs, uh, let's talk Watchmen. <laughs> Yay! Speaking of blue dongs. Perfect. Yo, Perfect. Uh, real, real, real uh, question for you guys. Are we seeing Yahya Abdul-Mateen's penis? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I'm cool with that. I definitely rewound. We've seen it twice now. So yeah. it, it is his... Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it is. Pretty sure because yeah. he's walk. It's he's 
you see the whole thing. Oh, I just cock. don't know if it's like a CG situation. I hope not. It's a strong cock. Because especially after cock. HBO showing so many boobies with Game of Thrones, like, yeah, finally we get to see like a pretty dick that doesn't have a wart on it. How's it blue? How's what? How's it blue? How's it blue? How is it, how is it blue? How is it blue? His whole body's blue. Yeah, but how, how is it blue? What do you mean? How, how does it feel blue? No, like, is, is the CG, are they painting? Like, how is oh, it blue? I'm sure it's painted. Oh, how is it blue? Yeah, Why maybe, maybe it's body painted blue. I, I, I thought we were doing like uh, Blue's Clues or something right now. I was like, what are you saying? How is it? I thought you were talking about blowing. That's why I was confused. Yeah. How is no. it blue? How is it blue? How well, is it blue? It's probably spray uh, it's paint or something. Oh, damn. All right, let's do let's do a non-spoiler review of the finale, guys, because it aired, and this is possibly this is possibly the last episode of Watchmen yeah. that we ever see. ever get. I know. We have not been picked damn. up for a season two yet. There's been a lot of talk from Lindelof saying that he actually would not come back for a season two. Who knows if that sticks or not? But as of now, this is the last planned, scheduled Watchmen live action TV show episode ever. Mm. Wild. Uh, initial thoughts, John, on this finale, non-spoiler. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. You know you worry about a show sticking the landing, as everyone's been saying it, especially with Lindelof involved, considering loss, considering other things have gone down, and I think he killed it here. Mm -hmm. And I think all the actors killed it here. I thought every question you could possibly have about this show got answered and with all the sadness and the bitterness and the racism and the white supremacy and all this sadness and you know hiding identities and all this kind of stuff, at the end, it ends on a hopeful note and mm. an earned mm -hmm. hopeful note, mm -hmm. which other shows could get vilified for, but this show earned its hopefulness by the end because of the ballsiness, or the gutsiness, rather, with which they tackled these issues head on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mark Riley. I couldn't agree more, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I loved every every second of this finale and just the whole series. Y you said it, Roka. It it felt like the end. Mm -hmm. So I don't know yeah. about season two, but it felt it felt like that was the story. So that if they we had don't a get a season two, you're happy. I I yeah. I don't know. I love this series. This is one of my favorite series now. I think of all time. Mm. Might might be jumping in the top ten for now. I'm gonna revisit. But if I didn't get one. I would be okay knowing that I could go back and enjoy this ser this series, the eight episodes. Nine. Would I want one? No, is it nine? Nine. 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 So or eight? Nine. would I want yeah. one? Yeah, I, I would. I would love to see where they go if they could. If if there's more story to tell, but that's I absolutely want Damon Lindelof back. Yeah. Dorina. I think he's the key to that. What do you think? Uh, as uh, you guys know that I'm a snob about this shit usually um, when it comes to superhero TV because my favorite up until now has been probably Legion, Daredevil, and Jessica Jones out of any like superhero, anything we yeah. watched on TV. This has surpassed them. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, Visually, Legion is still stunning to me, but I am so impressed with what they've done here because, and, and you mentioned it and you touched a, upon it, Ro Roca, with the fact that your your most shows when they try to f do a series or a season finale, I feel like they kind of take the easy route, mm -hmm. and and to not not only to answer basically every question that we've had so perfectly, but then every ans every question that they left open to the audience were all more like philosophical questions, and that's why it ended in such a beautiful note of hope. That <laughs> whole storyline with uh, Doctor Manhattan and Angela, mm -hmm. like I felt like such beautiful. a sappy person. I was mm -hmm. crying. It was it was embarrassing. Um, it is but, so embarrassing. Yeah, super embarrassing. Uh, but um, and the one of the best scores ever on TV, I think. Atticus and and Trent obviously mm -hmm. did an amazing job. Um, I do not want another season. Mm. I think the show is perfect as it should be. I think it should end. I I love the last scene. I think it, where it's kind of like an open ended question. Mm -hmm. I think it, I think they did a fantastic job. I don't want any more, and it completely surpassed any other TV show this this year for me. Cody Hall, thoughts on non spoiler Watchmen finale? Oh, I was so sad when it ended. Uh, mm -hmm. This show had no business being as good as it was, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just so glad they stuck the landing. It's one of my favorite nine weeks of television I've ever had. Just all the theorizing, speculation, and it, and it totally paid off. Mm -hmm. Great show, Alex. I agree with all that. Back up that Brinks truck. Give me that season two, baby. Mm. Mm. Dorian? Dorian? Mm. Good question. <laughs> yeah. Alex, don't fail. Come on, Alex. You guys, I, I really love the show. What's up, guys? Your boy, Dorian. Wow. I mean, it's so good. <laughs> wow. You're, you're nailing really good. that. Yeah. So let's get into some spoilers, guys. So if you do not want to hear spoilers for Watchmen, uh, the first season, Impossible Only Season, Episode 9, the finale, then tune out now for the next 
five. Five, five minutes, ten minutes. Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll frantically wave when we're done, okay? I'll wave. I'll do my, so if you're I'll do my wave. <laughs> if you're listening, I'll try to wave loudly. Yeah, we'll, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Darina will we'll do wave and wave. make it sound like something. So let's get right into this, guys. Spoiler review of Watchmen. All right, this finale. What was the part that stuck out to you guys the most? Who is the character? What is the storyline that you really wanted to to dive into today? Um, for me, honestly, the, the the Angela thing really quick, uh, I think is incredible that um, I somebody posted the actual poster of her, right? Like where she's kind of leaning to the side and she's blue. Yep. Mm. And I thought that was crazy Like that there's so many things, not just in the in the show's marketing, but the show itself, where they're totally hinting us as to what's going to happen. Mm. So the show wasn't so much about law in the style of law said like, oh, like you can you can guess what's going to happen because the show is telling you it's more so of how it's constructed. Mm. Right. And all the philosophical and existential questions that it poses. I couldn't believe how little I picked up on. Right. Like how little I predicted, especially with all the egg stuff. Right. Still being as surprised as I was, was mm -hmm. because I'm one of those people who watches TV and is forever guessing. Mm -hmm. I watch so much television. I, I pride myself and also get frustrated by the fact that I nine out of ten times know what's happening next. Right. I did not know. I did not see any of this coming. My predictions were all wrong mm -hmm. and i and i think that they did that in such a great way because it wasn't like twist for twist's sake right. it was twist because it made sense mm -hmm. um and reveals that worked so I, I agree the the angela stuff they had like 50 different things that let us know what was going to happen and yep. i still didn't know and i'm glad you brought up the egg thing because i was reading an interview with uh, lindelof that he basically had this whole idea where the, the eggs now are the symbol of, of like in the original comics, obviously we had like the smiley face, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. so in that first episode, we see you had a smiley face with eggs, if you guys yeah. remember. Yeah. And so that's even like there. That that's how well crafted and, and and thought it out in advance with the detail with this freaking show, man. Because they're thinking about switching. Okay, now we've shown our audience that this is Watchmen, and we have our own motifs that we picked up and we've yeah. transformed for our own show. Like that's fucking awesome, and yeah. it's just little details everywhere. Yeah, and it was beautiful. I, to, to your point, Roxy, what stuck with me, it's that the ending with Dr. Manhattan saying, I need you here with me. Like, to be, he didn't want to be alone. Mm -hmm. And to, This is why I hate this homie. Yeah. I Oh, my God, I can't. It's, it was I gorgeous. I, but it was, I, I hate him. I hate pull, him. Pull the, the heartstrings, huh? Well, because everybody's saying he has no choice. He has no choice. He has he no does cho have a choice. He has a choice to die by himself. And I, yeah. get, I get him not wanting to, but we can't then just make excuses for him. But if you were him, though, wouldn't you be scared to die alone too? Uh, it's not that I wouldn't be; it's that I would protect the people that I love. So you, so you would actually, I you would, would send not her make away. the selfish. I would send her away a hundred percent. I would not have been with her in the first place. Right. But so you know That's what I got from is. it? That I. That's. But I think I, he I knew he had. He always knew he was. At least this is for me. He always knew he was going to die. And he was going to face that at some point, and maybe he knew that she would be okay, and that's why he wanted her there. But he can't see past being dead, so how does he know? Right? Unless that's he a can. good point. That's a good point. What do you think, John? Um, I understand your anger. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> that being said, I think I agree with Riley. I think Manhattan knew she had to be there more, and, and he said what he had to say to her, which is, "I don't want to die alone." Right. Mm -hmm. He knows that will affect her and move her to stay there. And then uh, he knows Adrian Veidt's going to do what he's going to do and drop those things. Mm -hmm. He knows all of that's coming. Mm -hmm. But he knows that if he's going to pass this gift on to someone who, like they said, anybody who wants that power shouldn't have that power. Right. Angela I love doesn't that. want that power. Yeah, but you're calling it a gift. Is right. that what it is? I think it is. I think it's an but absolute like all gift. All gifts, they're a blessing and a curse. Right. Um, yeah, it's a great gift. I mean, gift. he has to give it to someone. Right. Like, who's he going to give it to? He doesn't want to give to Lady like, True. What would you do? Exactly. exactly. And so, so I think he... Having her there, having her witness the horror of the seventh, what, seventh cavalry, the right. horror of Lady True, the horror of all this, it is a lesson for her. So that when she drinks the egg, mm -hmm. she understands the mantle and the power that she is taking on, and what to do with it. And, and she understands and it better than any better other than character anybody. that and he being, would give it to. Exactly, her and being way. there right. is essential. Can we break down the seventh cavalry for a second? Because I've heard different thoughts and theories on what happened to them. Okay. Right, do you guys feel sure that you know what happened to the seventh cavalry? They you died. mean whether they, they died? They, they yeah. Do you think that they were like beamed somewhere else, that's, like teleported? That's, one of, that's oh. different one of the dimension. theories that people are saying okay. that they didn't obliterate them; they they moved them. That's interesting. I Is I got that they were obliterated. Is yeah. it because people because uh, Laurie and uh, Adrian and them got beamed? Because that was via Doctor Manhattan, not. 
There are just true. theories about it because, uh, like, what somebody would do or what Dr. Manhattan was capable right. of doing or stepping in in that situation. Yeah. Um, also, him having that life or death, uh, like, fight or flight thing inside him. Right. If, if he was capable or if anybody's capable of making them not just dissolve but transferring them somewhere else. Right. I believe also that they are kaput. Yeah. But I, 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 I thought that. When I saw the episode, there was no question in my mind. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the internet and saw a lot of people saying, they're alive, they're alive, they're somewhere else. And I think maybe that might go into people's wishing uh, a season two. Yeah, maybe that's that's wishful thinking that there is going to be something revealed if we do get a season two. They do certainly leave it open, especially with that ambiguous right. ending. Perfect ending. That I loved. Really good. That I love, love, love. Oh, it's like it was one of the most satisfying things yeah. I've ever seen on television. Where when she ste- takes that step, and I was like, I bet you they're gonna cut right I, now I into black. And I was black. like, Oh, they they're did doing it. The it was ending. perfect. It was the first and only thing I've ever predicted. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I, do you? Are, how confident are you guys that she walks on water? I think she does. Yeah, I think she. I think I think she's supposed, but especially with know. that poster like theory that people were talking about, like where she's already blue and she mm-hmm. intended at that. If she if she eats the egg and is able to walk on water, do you guys think that Doctor Manhattan somehow does know that she ends up okay because he lives inside her? So that's how he knew. Yeah, that's certainly I possible. So. Mm-hmm. I also think. Let me throw something else out there. Remember that his her daughter sees that she is. Mm-hmm. Um, Lady Night was it mm-hmm. Lady Night uh, or whatever her, her character yeah. Sister, yeah. Sister, Sister Night, Sister Night. Sister Night. Yeah. so it's mantle passing right both those moments are mantle passing mm-hmm. her ah. taking the egg to be Manhattan his daughter her daughter will take on uh, uh, Sister Night after wasn't her. it her son that <laughs> saw it? or son I'm sorry her son saw it right uh, I think so. Yeah. That's I, I believe so. So he'll pass. He'll he'll step into the mantle and meet Brother Knight or something like that. Right, so right. I have only sort of seen this episode once as Same. of this point, and I will say that I definitely need to check it out again. Mm-hmm. There was so much going on. Mm-hmm. At the, in other episodes, I have watched them multiple times, but I didn't feel like I felt like we had one core focus because we had to tie so many yep. strings at this. I was like, my, I, I still dealing with some of my emotions from one scene, and then we were already halfway through the next scene, and I was like, mm-hmm. crap. And wait. just little details like the whole uh, Adrian thing where he writes, "Save me," but then it becomes "Save, save me, daughter, daughter." Right? Like there's just that. all these things that they had planned out in advance, obviously, for it to yeah. work. I guess the thing that for me, uh, because of my taste in, in movies and, and and messages in general, like and and TV. I love the fact that you have all of these characters like the Lady Tro who thinks she's doing something good for humanity, but at the same time she's narcissistic enough to be like, no, but I want like my dad, right. you know, to be remembered as for 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 what I've done for humanity, right? right? Where then you have characters like the the, the mass people, like like an Angela, mm-hmm. that don't want to be known for that, right? Mm-hmm. But they are trying to deal with their own anger yeah. to help people, right? It's just it's just such a well executed uh, story mm-hmm. that reflects the I think what the meaning of the original Watchmen graphic yeah. novel so e- well. Even the realistic moment when Francis Fisher is like, "Just kill us. We don't want to hear you." Exactly. Yourself. That's exactly. Love exactly what that. would happen. That's mm-hmm. exactly what would happen. White supremacists would be like, screw it. You got us. Go and kill us. What do we yeah. care? Exactly. Like, exactly. You're going to kill us, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. She's, yeah. I love but that I like moment. that she read the reasons, right? Yes. Another show might not read the reasons. That's, mm-hmm. the, the, that's the hallmark of this show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They have no fear of walking into that and stating what is actually happening here and letting you deal with it. And I want to say one last thing. That conversation between Louis Costa Jr. and Angela in the theater, fuck, man. It's yeah. beautiful. That was really fantastic. so good. If you generationally the conversation they're having as black people, and right. then generally the conversation they're having as a grand a, a grandfather or a right. father to the daughter, or gr- right grandfather to the daughter, mm-hmm. all of that. There's so much here that they're working on. Yes, uh, on so many levels, both societally pol- and politically uh, and emotionally, all of it. It's just incredible. and that's the thing that look, I I rarely talk about uh, how we need. Uh, you know, I'm not tweeting all the time. They're like, we need diversity all the time, and like I try not to do that because I think that um, it, I think it's important to talk about it. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I think it's talked about too much where it's like okay I, I get it let's do it but this show specifically it's so important that they had black writers yeah mm-hmm. because nobody else knows what what that group Fair went point. through also four of the five directors um four of the episodes of the nine episodes excuse me were directed by women yep. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. most of the episodes were co-written by women yep. mm-hmm. um so a, a lot of different strides moving forward uh, especially because I know HBO has been scrutinized in the past for this right. with Game of Thrones so it was a mm-hmm. big point of contention not having women in the writer's room so and if you yeah. go woke you don't go broke oh how what a fascinating thing yeah. the well, problem is overly woke it's yeah like a whole other thing well, yeah. Sure. yeah I I felt like this show 
I, I'm I currently uh, writing an article about it that will have more on this, but I, it's nice. a shame that Alan Moore won't watch because right. I actually think that he would love it. It is so true. It's so true mm. to what he initially was trying to do. Rip. That. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I agree. I'm, I said, yep. Oh, they, oh, said, they rip. said rip. Yeah, 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 I, no, was yep. like, I was that like, was that me? Whoa. Uh, yeah, that I just think if he could. If he could put aside the fact that he never wanted it touched again, he would actually really appreciate that it had been touched again. Well, especially with you guys saw his video from last week, right? No, what because he, he never comes out yeah, and does yeah. anything public, and he actually uh, fil- filmed a short video in order to encourage people in the UK to vote because, mm-hmm. unfortunately, it didn't go the way you yeah. know a he, lot of people right. wanted. But but uh, he he was encouraging people. He was he was he was encouraging saying encouraging people to vote. Yeah, yeah. he was saying I am an anarchist, but I think we need to vote here because he's scared that he you know we're going to lose our democracy. Basically, I thought you were talking about the Globes. No, yeah. definitely not. Yeah, That's my little Hollywood shit. world. I don't I think, he, he I don't think Alan Moore well, gives a shit about award shows. I was like, no way. <laughs> no, no, no. If we don't get no, a, we're talking about the big UK yeah, vote course, last course, week. Course, yeah, 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 yeah. If we don't get a second <laughs> season, then the show becomes like the graphic novel. Yep. Mm-hmm. You pass the show on to people and it, you say, you got to watch this yep. show. If we second. do go to a second season, do you guys want this to be Regina King as Dr. Manhattan yes. season two? Sure. I think there's a lot to explore with that. A uh, female absolutely. Dr. Manhattan. Yeah, There's so much. To that that's what gets me. That's the hook for me. Um, but I could see, dong. I could see why. Yep, yeah, you'll miss the we dong. Blue, I'm sure oh, there's flashbacks we can. Get or you, you a can dong. get a blue clitoris. There you go. Yeah, mm. blue clitoris. Yeah. Hey, that's a new one we should cool. put in here. That should that should be a deep thought. <laughs> so for some reason, that burned when you said it. Like it sounds like a venereal disease. Oh, she's got that blue clitoris. <laughs> yeah, it, it does sound like something you need some penicillin for. Yeah, get um, it gone. But, Sorry, Mark. Continue. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, anyways, about the blue clitoris. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, there's something <laughs> there to go to go to some of the talking about like how it was set up. You know, I keep going back to when he was revealed as Doctor Manhattan. He said, "You have to see me walk on water." That was like something that was so important for him to show her. Yeah, so and that, she's like, that get off my pool. Right, which was so hysterical Why? in the moment. So that makes me absolutely believe that she walks on water before we after we cut you know we're not seeing it but she walks on water mm. and the implication of that is the next season will be her adjusting to being a Dr. Yeah, Manhattan yeah, yeah. which I think is an a fascinating thing to go into in as a character to see what it's like because I also love the idea of like you do not want to need this power, crave this power. A narcissist shouldn't have this power. Dr. Mm-hmm. Manhattan was gifted with this, like fate. And she's actually trying to change the course and make it happen. So the implications of that are fascinating to me that you can explore in season two, especially with Regina King's character. Especially, um, especially with their conversation they had when they were uh, the flirting a couple episodes or when they were flirting mm-hmm. at the table, mm-hmm. all the questions she had about it, mm-hmm. about his power. Those now are at the on bar. Her. Are you yeah, about? the bar. Yeah, those are now back on her when she becomes Doctor Manhattan. Can she answer those questions for herself as her, as a Doctor Manhattan? Yeah. What does she do with that power? Right. Right. Yeah. It's fascinating. The thing that I think is funniest about this finale, because as somebody who watched Leftovers and Lost, and you wonder what about that smoke monster? Mm-hmm. Where did two percent of the population go? Four, eight, fifteen, sixteen, twenty-three, forty-two. Like, what is happening here? The question after this show seems to be, Lube Man. Question mark. Right. Yeah. Like everyone on Twitter last oh, night that I was question. seeing was Lube Man. And I heard that Watchmen's website actually put up a little additional information on him. I didn't actually check it out <laughs> yet, but that they were they wanted us to have a little Lube Man resolution. So thank you to them for I think caring it was about that Lube Man. Agent, right? Like Dale something, I forget his yeah, name. Yeah, there was something there's an article on, on dot com that I was reading this morning uh, about it. And why do you know why Lindelof did it? Because when he would talk about Watchmen characters, I believe it was Hooded Justice within the original uh, comic that a lot of people were like, no, that's not my favorite. Like they would Dr. Manhattan or comedian. And so he was such a smaller part that he wanted to add a, a one of those characters right. that people talk about. And I think it was. Yeah, revealed. It, they're saying uh, as all styled as if written by Agent Dale Peaty, the dweeby FBI guy who works with Gene Smart's Lori Blake. Right. So that's who people think it is. Oh, he looks like a putty from the Power Rangers. Season two, baby. Season two. Uh, all right. Rise of Lube Some Man. of us do, yeah. some of us don't, but that's it for spoiler talk for now, guys. Let's uh, wave our hands like we just don't care. Ooh, Darina's wave freaks me out. No, I don't. Oh, st- oh yeah, God. Yeah, that's weird. Doesn't that hurt your wrist to look at? 
No. So that's the cello wave? Is that what you yeah. said? Well, I okay. don't get it. I just did this a lot when I was a kid, so that's why. Yeah. Why, why does that make you do that? I don't know. Because I just because because and when you're playing a string instrument, you're you're taught that you have to free your wrists instead of doing this. You actually have to let the, let like have this movement. Free your mm. I'm wrist. glad that this get is it. on the internet. You're yeah. gonna you're gonna live to regret that. It's someday. forever. Yeah, it is. There's other news going on, especially in entertainment. Mark Riley, what's happening? Well, speaking of putty men, we have a Power Rangers reboot oh, in the works. there you go. Uh, nice segue there. I guess so. Uh, so it's not going to be a continuation of the movie that came out a couple years ago. This is a whole new reboot film coming from the end of the fucking world director, Jonathan Ent- Entwistle. Entwistle. So I watched only season one of End of the Fucking World, okay. and I don't know if he, if that too directed. Can you check that on IMDb yeah, for check. me? I will say that I will be watching season two because this show was bizarro. Did any of you guys check this out ever? No. Um, you know, wait, which the End of the Fucking World? Yeah, I saw, I saw a couple of episodes. End of the Fucking World, yeah. which was on um, Netflix. Yes. And the only reason I watched it is because it was on Netflix and it started playing after mm-hmm. something, and then I was hooked. But uh, you liked it, right? At, hooked, yeah. totally hooked. So I wonder if he was. Involved in the? Did you guys? Can you guys see Cody Alex? I'm looking right now. Uh, I'm looking to. behind you. He did not. He directed. But you uh, have your big head in front he did of him. Direct some. My big. He directed some. Well, directed five episodes. If in he, 2017. Okay. Looks like he. He is this. It's so weird. The story, the visuals, everything about it is so strange that I think he's incredible. Going to a Power Ranger movie, I'm like. Wow, I, I don't know the through line at all. There must have been something else. There must have been another pitch, a project he had worked. Like something must have clicked because it is s- such a different genre. I mean, I mean, didn't Fincher direct Alien Three? Was it? Oh, he did. Dude, I'm not saying he can't yeah, do it. Right, I'm right. just saying it, it's not like they saw it. It's like why did he and they were choose like, that project? Power Rangers. No, what? Well, well, yeah, both. Yeah, why yeah. did he choose it? Why did they choose him? Right, right, right. Why is that the marriage? So this is what makes me interesting. Yeah, it, it makes me. It could be good. In this. Exactly. Because yeah. it must be something. Must be up. Yeah. Like this is a a different story, a different take. Uh, he could be just a massive fan of Power Rangers, right? Yeah. And so he wants his shot at it. And they certainly want to walk, walk away from the darkness of the last one, right? The darker, grittier take. Right. Having them go back in the 90s, who knows what they're going to do with that, and then right. come back out to be in the, to the present. We'll see how that does. The writer of Peter Rabbit 2, is that who's writing it? Yeah, yeah. Patrick Burley yeah. is huh. uh, the That's screenwriter of Peter Rabbit mark. 2, The Runaway. Did any of you grow oh. up as Power Rangers fans? Yes. Nope. Like the old stuff? Or? Yes. No. Um, I, yeah. I Cody. used to have Kimberly at my birthday party. That's that was awesome. like the big... Once a year, I got to have that. Uh, I, I like Power Rangers a lot growing up, but not since. It's Great not like song. the fandom stuck with me. Cody, why are you a Power Rangers fan? No, I'm in the same boat as you. Alex? I just like the song, so I wanted to hear. Same. Same. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. Do you guys know any diehard Power Ranger fans? Perry. 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 Yeah. Hardcore. She's interviewed all of them, right? <laughs> I wonder what she thinks about this. Oh, you watch Movie Talk this morning. Yeah. What did she, she say? She goes off on a seven-minute rant about it, or five-minute rant about it. So she really? Because she wanted a, a she's sequel, to the, yeah. sequel to the, the one that came out in 2017. Yeah, she liked that last one. But did she like, a lot of people did. Did she like this director-writer team? She does like the director-writer team. She's concerned about the fact that they're going into the 90s and that thing about nostalgia because of what happened with Terminator. Mm. It's like, and oh, that we, seems uh, to be happening a lot now that people are getting sick of the 80s nostalgia. Right. It's like now we're going into 90s again. Right. So. And she, she liked this fine. cast. She wanted this cast to come back. So They look cool. Yeah. Ooh, Don't that looks go good too. Ranger. Damn. I do like the song a lot. It's really great. It's really song, catchy, isn't it? Mark Riley, talk to me. What else is going on in the news? All right, let me pull some up. Let's go over a box office report because. No. Totally. No, keep going. Keep going. Ben Powell. Mm-hmm. Ben Powell yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's really good. Uh, Jumanji: The Next Level crushed opening weekend with a sixty million, sixty point one. Million uh, on its first opening weekend with Frozen 2 at 19.1, with Knives Out at number three, number four, Richard Jewell, and number five, Black Christmas. But uh, Jumanji, the next level, making 60 million, I think is pretty impressive. Yeah, phenomenal. So. Um, it's next level. It's <laughs> next level. I, I don't have uh, <laughs> worldwide yet if it's uh, opened yet. Let me look and go to box office. Are you surprised mode. by this, John? Yes. 
I, uh, me, I, too. me too. Because the original only grossed thirty-seven million, and only I say that it was you know opening up against Last Jedi, and then it was a build, and then it was a build right to nine hundred million, just over nine hundred million. But so this is fantastic. It's huge, one hundred fifty-two point five million worldwide. Oh, for a total of 212 already in its first weekend. Let me ask you, I just feel like these types of sequels don't do well usually. What percentage of this is due to The Rock? A lot. You think? Maybe internationally? Yeah. Sure. You think he's just kind of like Tom Cruise where people are going to see his movie no matter what? I believe Mm. he is the biggest living movie movie star today. Mm -hmm. Besides Tom Cruise? I think he is the biggest living movie star today. Okay. I think The Rock is. I'm not saying of all time. I'm not saying uh, Tom Cruise is a, is a bigger movie star ever. But today, right. I think he like is the currently. biggest box office draw. I do. And I gotta take a look at something. Hmm. What's that now? You what are you going to look at? Share with the class. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I just yeah. I want to see. You want to pull box because, office for Cruise? Well, no, because like, well, we don't know yet, right? Because Hobbs and Shaw is big. How, Sk- how how good did Skyscraper do? How good did Rampage do? That's that's true. I, Those yeah. questions have I think to be Baywatch that, didn't be- do well. Yeah, that's true. I I so, I agree with what you're saying. And I just want to see. I've had this argument is. so many times with people. Mm. It, you're not wrong. Just in my, I guess it's in my opinion. Yeah. On that, he is the biggest living movie star. I think that he has such a different wide draw than uh, Tom Cruise is in the conversation. Nobody else is in the conversation. Well, the thing me. is, what works in your favor, Roxy, is the fact that he is a star in multiple mediums. Just so many. Right? The wrestling thing, still mm-hmm. a part of That's that. True. The yeah. TV show with Ballers, the video games, now Black Adam announcement. So he is a super, and he knows how to work social media. I finally uh, got TikTok, downloaded TikTok over oh, the weekend. Oh, I don't have it yet. And no. he has 13.5 million TikTok. followers on TikTok already. So he knows what he knows wow. how to work this entire thing perfectly. So yeah. you make a great point. I, I I don't know. I think that Jumanji Next Level without him, may, no way. Maybe no. he does have that. Think, I think you're if right that. about that. Um, but also, I mean, did, weren't we just talking about this last week too that we mm. didn't think it was going to do well that we didn't see because of of the, the season that it came out into? Yeah. Like we thought it was well, more of a summer movie, so that's very oh yeah. it wasn't surprising. That, it wasn't that I didn't think it was going to do well because of that. It was that I thought that it would have been a better summer movie. Right. Mm. But I I thought that this movie was going to do fine. I didn't right. think it was going to do killer like yeah. it right. did. Yeah. Right. I, it is. It, always going to do fine when you're opening up with nothing like it around you and you've got The Rock and you've got Kevin Hart and um, Jack Black, Karen mm-hmm. Gillan, like the uh, Aquafina pulling in oh, n- new stars, she's new draws. Great. The Jonas Kid, I forget which one it is. Nick. I Nick. I can't tell. It's a Lame Miss Kid. He was in Lame Miss. Nick Jonas? Yeah. I don't remember that. He was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not in the movie. Oh. In, in like, oh. actually live. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, really? Yeah. Uh, I think that it, they stacked the cards in their favor by with their cast and the fact that Jumanji, the first one, did so well, mm-hmm. or the first one of this new iteration. Um, do you, you guys think, but still, though? It's, 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 a lot, it's so much money. Do you guys, so much money. So much. Do you guys think, though, it's because it's end of year and most audiences just want to go see a fun, more, like, silly comedy because sure. everybody's stressed out. Like, they don't want to see serious movies like a Richard Maybe. Jewell or something mm-hmm. else, you know? I think it's a franchise now that, that audiences know and it's there's something comforting about that, knowing you can go into a theater and know you're going to laugh, uh, be impressed by the graphics. It's The Rock, it's Jack Black, it's it's Kevin Hart to all the, the, the actors there. So I think it's it's a no-brainer that this thing did well. Let me ask there's you guys no... this. Cats or Jumanji? Which ultimately makes more money? <sighs> I think Jumanji. Cats will I Cats think sink like a stone. I don't know. I think Cats I is going to I can't figure do, out Cats. I think Cats is going to do a lot of, uh, uh, really well even if it's bad. When I was driving to, to meet you guys yesterday, I sat in front of the huge building with the Cats poster and I just was looking at it and immediately was thinking about my mother <laughs> who is the gigantic Cats fan. Who cannot wait to see this exactly. thing has roped off Christmas to say thank you, Cody. <laughs> Thanks. To Jennifer. say we are going to see cats. And I said, Don't you want to see Star Wars? She said, I said cats. <laughs> and I was like, Okay. Cats. Got it. Cats. I mean, the, aren't you the, guys the all stage gonna play? See it? I don't I want asked, to see it I so asked much. Both but... of you guys, if you would come with me on Tuesday night, right. you both turned me down. Yes. Not because I don't want to, but you because I have I don't plans. have a plus one. Should we sit next to each other for cats? <gasps> you got to do this, should. guys. I like, think it's the friendship like is taking a turn. You want to be my plus one, or you're already invited? I'm already invited. But I, why don't you have a plus one? Because no one wants to go. No one wants to go with me. I want to go, but yeah, I have. Gonna, plans. But for sure, we should sit next to each other. Okay, 100%. Done. I'm gonna see if I can cancel my plans. Because Perry invited me too, and I'm like, mm. fuck, I want to go. You're going in the nighttime one. Yeah, nighttime, okay, seven yeah. o'clock. Yeah. Star Wars at two o'clock. Same, same, and same. Yep. Oh, Star Wars guys tomorrow at two. Can you believe we're seeing Star Wars tomorrow? By five p.m. We'll know. You guys, I'm so excited. Are you seeing it tonight? 
Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I'm going Drina? to the, I'm supposed to go to the after party. Oh, uh, good for you. But, um, I don't, I don't know yet. I'm going to see. Here's the thing. I have not, I've, had this g- I've been very What's lucky. Happening? I've been very lucky that I've been able to go to all of these premieres and oh, see Star Wars. It's very, I, I've been very you. thankful totally. for it. I have not seen a Star Wars movie in the theater with fans since probably the prequels. Wow. Oh. And so I kind of want to do that on Friday. Yeah. Right? Oh, I'm it's already going Friday. But, but I don't well, know. Again, but I also yeah. kind of want to see it like today Wait, or tomorrow. Sweet pause. Are you telling me you're invited to the premiere tonight and you're debating going? No, no. I'm invited to the after party. I haven't gotten a movie oh, ticket good yet. So, for you. so I don't know if I can see the movie yet. I could go and finagle myself in there, but I don't know. So mm-hmm. were you or were you not invited to Galaxy's Edge? I did go to Galaxy's Edge oh! because I've actually been a fan for 10 years. Yeah. So, mm. no, you so it. longer good than other people. Mm-hmm. And I bust my ass on That's this good. show. I made John and never talk shit about one. Oh. That's some good paneling, I tell yeah. you. On that I like it too, That's John. So wow. <laughs> must be new. Mm-hmm. But what? you guys are for sure seeing it tomorrow, though. Yes. Yeah. Here's yeah. the thing aren't we going to talk about it? Okay, online? so I had to see it then. What? God damn it. Okay. Wouldn't we talk about. Seen Star Wars, the biggest movie of the year, on our show, Collider Live? Yes, what do you mean? So, Darina. Okay, I have oh, to see it. Okay, I get it, I get You're it. You're debating not even seeing it on Tuesday? Well, yeah, right. I was wondering, should I just see it see, Friday yeah, thank you, with Roxy. the fan? But no, I guess I have to see it to talk about it. Okay, fine. Fine. I mean, Twist you... her arm. Isn't it? Yeah, but also, it... not Friday, Thursday night. Thursday night. Yeah, I want Thursday night. Yeah. Not Friday. How many people are going? Or you have like 106. 70, 106 this what? time. What? That's yeah. a new record. What? That's our new record. What are you yeah. talking about? 106 people in a theater. Yeah, every time we go see a Star Wars movie. Oh, my, my crew rolls big. My crew rolls large. Can you name every one of those 106? Pretty much, but I have oh to open up my Facebook page to find it. To is this them. part of the Mike Kalinowski crew? Uh, It's our crew. Kalinowski's part of it. I said, is this <laughs> part of Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. It's our crew. It's Mike actually Kalinowski. He, he's come on Kalinowski. over the last few years, but we already had our crew before Kalinowski. Oh, so you, you see started. Him, I don't know. Tell yeah, him that sure. I haven't seen him in a minute, and I would like his chocolate balls. If you have not had them, they are so good, and it's a Christmas specialty of his. And if you, you're really missing out, is it like Pete's sweaty balls? Sweaty no, balls. His balls I like the are balls unlike smell. any other. They're peanut butter chocolate balls, and they are so fucking that sounds great. good. You should have to put like them in the your way. mouth. Yeah. Oh, you know what we should do? Mouth. We should invite him on this week. Yeah, we should. For that. Okay. I'd for be balls. down. For, just for the balls. Don't okay. tell him that, though, guys. Tell him that we're inviting him on because we love him. Yeah, tell thank me God this isn't live. I want to try to get him on a mailbag, so it might work both ways. Mm, I love mailbag? this comment by Shanti Sima. No, when's mailbag? Uh, whatever. Because we have to do what? two. We have to record two ahead of time. Mm. He's like, Darina is the lube woman sliding into those premieres. You guys got some good <laughs> puns. <laughs> That's really good. Well done. Yeah. While we are talking about um, pre-tapes and whatnot, just so you guys know, we are going to do a Christmas and a New Year's episode today. We are mm. taping those. Mm-hmm. So we will open up the phone lines for you guys. Uh, for that afterwards you won't be able to hear the episode but you will be able to call in after the show for the following two hours Right. Uh, so make sure you're doing that but we will open up the phone lines now to take calls yeah. mm. today on this live show any other news going on Riley? Uh, I mean there's a cli- there's another clip for Star Wars that we could talk about but, uh, but why? Don't we want we to see the to. movie right? we just need to see yeah. the movie I need why to, are you I mad need... bro? Look, because I'm ready <laughs> and I don't want to see these these clips anymore these well, TV tell, spots. Well, to, to tell them. I'm tell gonna, them to I'm stop telling, doing I'm it. I'm telling you, Darina. Why don't you call I Disney you and tell hex. them stop you marketing the movie? Disney. <laughs> you know what I just was thinking about? When we, were ta- when we were complaining about what day we're going to see Star Wars, I'm wondering, Alex, Cody, were you guys making fun of us in there? No, not yet. Okay. Uh, I'm also seeing it tomorrow. Shocker. Nice. Ooh. I'm seeing a movie early. No Good. thanks to any of you. What no. time are you seeing it, Cody? Cody. I'm going to the I offered my well. Pokemon. Also, literally also, never everybody... asked me. I would have taken you in a heartbeat. Cody. Everybody's Funny going to ask. the two. Okay, I'll go to the two then. Alex is not yeah. going yet. Yeah. Yeah. Alex needs to go. Can I get a Alex, I have Alex. a plus one. You want to come? Come with me. Yeah. Yeah, come. There we go. That wasn't so hard. Boom. And I think I you mind plus. I guess one I'll is you. go with you tomorrow then. Right. Yeah, it's because if you're oh, all gonna be I'm there, sorry. I want to see it with all of you. I would offer it to you first. I'm now we're offered all it to me there at two yeah. o'clock. Friendship, Star Wars. Okay. Friends. I'm taking sausage maker Adam Gertler, so we'll, we, nice. can all, we can all hang. I okay. like that. Yeah, he was like, he's great. He was like, you know what? Um, I think I can go because I'll be on the street selling doghouse right before that. <laughs> I Wait, was like, what? Like, what? Loves You're this. like, I, I, well, first of all, Doghouse is a, is a fantastic. It, it, it is amazing. I love Doghouse, but I was like, what do you mean? He was like, it's right by, like for the like for the screening, we're doing Doghouse outside. So then I'll just pop in. I was like, oh. I don't even get what you're saying, but all right, dude. Wait, he. he hey. What? Oh no! I'm he, never he's co-owner. 
Yeah. Oh. Gertler. Yeah, he's the he first mom and caller. Oh. Oh. Call your uncle out alive. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I didn't just kick you on purpose, just so you know. Oh, no, I know. I'm hey, uh, show. this is uh, Yash from Toronto. Yo. Hey, how's it going? What's going on? What do you got for us today? Nothing. Uh, just talking. Uh, I've been watching the show. Uh, I know it's almost the end of the year, so I'm just probably getting busy to wrap up. But um, I'm, I was watching an episode a couple days ago, and you guys were talking about some of your favorite movies of the decade. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I was just thinking about some movies that were kind of on the top of my head, I guess. I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, I think a lot of a lot of uh, movies that I think people were missing out, I think, were uh, Hell or High Water. That was a pretty good favorite. It's pretty a great favorite movie. movie mm-hmm. Like, do, do, do you guys think about any movies that you had that you didn't really have on your list at the time or you thought about it in some hindsight and then kind of wanted to add? Mm, good question. Thank you so much for calling in. Uh, and I want to go to Toronto. I've never been. Anything that you guys thought left off that you wanted to add from this year? I from I just have decade. one. I oh. have one for sure, and it was because I hadn't seen it. And mm. Roca, mm. you were dead right. By absolutely, without a doubt, the best movie of the year is 1917. Yep. Well, yeah, shit. I, I need to see that. Without, oh, without a doubt, I'm I'm not saying it's my favorite. I'm not saying even though I, it is definitely one of my favorite, but it is the best piece of art that I have seen in a long time. It is the best movie. Of is the it year. mainly due to Roger Deakins? Yes. Okay. I wouldn't and say Mendes. mainly I wouldn't say mainly, but he I mean, it's I would you say this is Deakins best? Because I almost think so. I really it's hard, hard time it's hard, it's really hard is time. It, but, is it is it really is it more beautiful than Blade Runner twenty forty nine? That's why I'm hard to time, me to me they're to me they're a toss up, but this is this is unlike anything I've ever seen. I mm. I watched it and thought to myself I have no idea how they did this. Yep. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. I, I very rarely do I see a movie and think, "How the f- did they do this?" Right. Like I, I, I really don't get it. Well, I don't get crap. it. Mm-hmm. It's okay. so unbelievable. Because because there's a collider screening that. tomorrow for it, you and that's go. why I was be- between that oh. and Cats. Oh, well, I, see, yeah. I have to see both. Yeah. Well, now you're screwed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> Jojo thinking... Rabbit has just entered my top five. Oh. I oh, finally did you just saw that. I finally watched it so this weekend. It is. It is. It's excellent. So good. It's amazing. I love it. Love that Adore movie. it. Um, Anything beautiful that movie. you forgot to put on your list? Um, no, <laughs> no, because I, cool. I, no, I'm trying to think, but no, I, of the I decade, loved right? Of the decade, I was pissed that I forgot about her because her is one of yeah. my favorite movies. I, that would be the one for yeah. me. Mm-hmm. I that, think that. you mentioned it. Yeah, but I, I hadn't put it on my list initially. Like while we were talking about it, I was like, oh, that's got to be on my list. Her is one of the best sci-fi movies, like sort of d- romantic dramas that I've seen in so long. Okay. Yeah. Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. Yes, Cody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the best movie and performance to not be nominated. Are you? Are they dumb? Yeah. I mean, the fact that Jillian Hall was not nominated yeah. for that is is seriously the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It is, it is the best performance of possibly the decade. Mm-hmm. And no nom. He was really no, good. Not even, but it's not that he didn't win. He was not nominated. The I don't know what's do think up with the Academy it's a and genre? Jake. I don't, because no, I think it's a Jake Gyllenhaal thing. I don't know what is up with them and him. But he, that dude is one of the best performers of our time. Right. And he gets no burn. Right. Mm. I mean, no I burn. think, because I wonder if it's like a thriller, because so many people have been talking about uh, other people being left out this year. Like like I said, I think Florence Pugh should be nominated for Midsummer. I think she was incredible. Uh, whatever you think of the movie, the mm. emotional death to that character is amazing. And she didn't even speak that much. Little yeah. Woman, she was great. She I was just amazing finally too. saw it. She was, she was really great in yeah. that. I still stand for Zero Dark Thirty. Not a lot of people talk about that film. I, know I love that I saw it on a lot of people's top lists. Yeah, I love that film. I did That's see it. That's a great movie. I don't um, like, Argo can sink like a stone. Our, Zero Dark Thirty was the best film. I hey, Alex, I think that when we talk about actors, you should just pull them up shirtless. Yeah, yeah. Every we time. searched Jake Gyllenhaal Paul. abs, and yeah. these are the results. South yeah. Paw, By baby. the way, we have a new title for the show today, Alex. You want to pull that up? We have a new thumbnail and everything. Oh, so yeah, what do we got? This. Mm. Camille's oh, abs explained. Yes. Definitely. Uh, explained. There we that's, go. That's a uh, yeah. Actually, that's the pre-tape. Right? Yeah, yeah uh, that's that. actually on our Patreon <laughs> channel, guys. So. Yeah. 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 That's that's works. Wow, yeah. I, I like could that. look at that all day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My that's big ex- head in the way. <laughs> Sorry, Roxy. <laughs> yes. Take some abs. Honestly, yes. I'll just Can be you over move here. your head so I can stare at his absolutely. abs? Absolutely, I understand. Thank you. Can we do more abs explained content on Collider, please? Yes. Cody, let us know when we have a caller. Hey, Roxy. <laughs> uh, Caller, you're on Sassy Collider Cody. Live. What's Wanna your name? You know. Where are you calling from? Hey, it's Lydia from Georgia. Hey, Lydia. Hey, Lydia. Lydia from Georgia. So happy to have you here. What do you got for us today? Hey, first off, I have to do this. 
Rina, Rala, Roca, Rossi. I didn't do it today. It's the best. Thank you. Damn. Damn. Perfect. My favorite. Yeah. yeah, I'm really glad. I like having Roca on the show more. Oh, thank you. Oh, you same. Too. Yeah. We like Roca. Um, I also, thank you. Yeah, Roca. Um, one thing I wanted to tell you, I forgot to tell last time, was I think you said that when you were um, back in your Army days, you oh. were stationed at Fort Gordon. Fort Gordon, Augusta, Georgia. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's where I live. Oh, wow. That's a beautiful yeah, town. So I, beautiful town. What's it called? Yes, yeah. Fort Gordon. It's Fort in a, Gordon? It's yeah. in Augusta, Georgia. I was a Signal Corps guy. Damn. So, yeah, those. that's a beautiful yeah. town. Hmm. Yeah, thank you. And I'm, yeah, I hope you had, uh, you enjoy your time over there. And thank you for your service. Oh, thank you, Lydia. Thanks for calling in. That's very sweet of you to say that. Wow. All yeah. Time so, yeah, this is cool. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, my question is. Um, you know, we're coming at the end of the decade and everything. So kind of like a reflective question. Um, and you guys can go into as much detail as you want on this. So if you want to keep it shallow, that's up to you. <laughs> but where were you guys? But where were you? Were all of you at the very beginning of the decade, 2010? Oh, great question. Um, wow. Well, I, I did not think that, that was what you were going to ask after the keep it shallow. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for the call, Lydia. Oh. Really appreciate it. Where were you guys at the beginning of the decade, 2010? Man. Man, I don't remember where I was Damn, last year. Damn, I remember. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. Yep. How I've come full circle. Were you getting divorced? I was getting divorced literally at the start of 2010. <laughs> and I'm going to be getting married at the end of two, 2019. Whoa. Well, so, I mean, I'm two, coming oh, full, ser- ten I'm full circle. Ten years later, you're getting married. Yeah. 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 Ten years later. Which, Cody, you shouldn't wow. do, you shouldn't a, do sad just... noises for getting divorced. Getting divorced is good. Sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no want want there. That was a you, you, like it was play the po- comedic play, effect. Guys. Well, it I was, know, I know. but you can play the Pokemon. Song Cody, so for that let me one. just tell you how to um, which sounds to play sure, when. Sure. What's um, funny, Roger? I'll just make a list of it for what's funny for you. But don't play that then, and then okay. also like yeah. maybe earlier, um, just a second sooner. Okay, Darina, where were you? Yeah, good. I'm glad we're timing. on the same page now. Yeah, timing <laughs> is important. Darina, where were you at the beginning of the decade? Uh, 2010. Oh, geez, I got the timing wrong. No, yeah, that was my fun. No, way. Again, Cody. Cody. Can you please? Can you please? Well, you used to be the master of the sound bites. I don't know what happened. I don't, I don't know what to do no, anymore. I think that the applause, yeah, well, we haven't even heard a response yet, <coughs> yeah. so, you know, you got to work on that. I'm going to say Batman Returns is going to fart on me. Um, so, I was... Oh, yes, Alex. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was, <laughs> nailed that. I was get lucky that the market, the house market was... The only time it was good in LA, and my husband and I bought a condo that year. Nice. Uh, and now, are we... you still in the condo? Yes, yes. So that's pretty cool. I guess it's like a weird thing that you guys own homes. We didn't do that in Mexico. So, mm. uh, but uh, <laughs> LOL, well, no. I do not own a home. Yeah, nobody in here. Nobody owns a home. does. Okay, yeah, well, I guess I do. Yeah, I, I, that, yeah. I, I own but, a shoebox, uh, and serious, I pay rent. Serious for that. question, but you've owned a home for ten years. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. I was going to say I didn't. I didn't realize that until now because I've never owned anything. Either you guys invited over there. Uh, yeah, I've been to your place for the. Your, I have uh, You guys party. have all been invited to a Halloween party at some point. Uh, we don't not. have them anymore, but we yeah, used to. We I, don't think oh, I can't believe you've been a homeowner okay. for ten years. Holy Isn't shit! Isn't that weird? Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, I was never going to do that, and I grew up poor, so I was like, "Oh, that's kind of cool." And, mm-hmm. and then the year after, uh, we got married. So nice. Yeah, there you, you guys go. bought a place together before you were married. Yes. Yeah, we needed to live together for a while before we could, you know. T- yeah. We're just, we're gonna tolerate each other for a long time. I love yeah. your dudisms when they got. We had we had to live together for a little yeah, bit yeah, before yeah. we got together. Yeah, yeah. John, uh, this is tough. Uh, 2010. That's when I was just about embark to embark on that terrible five year relationship that tore me to pieces. Oh. But so you hadn't gotten in it yet. No, we were just about to because I was turning a certain age and. Uh, I had reached out to this person and we started communicating. She was from my high school, an old a girl I used to have a crush on, and then we ended up like through email get and through Facebook messages getting together. She was married at the time, divorced, moved in with me. Terrible decision. We mm-hmm. ripped it all to pieces. This is the five year girl. Yeah, yeah, but it did lead to something positive because getting over the breakup to help me get over the breakup, Christian asked me to start doing Far, Far Away, mm. and that's what started me on this path to where I am now. So as much as that was such a terrible experience, it did lead to an incredible end result for me that I right. never saw coming in my life. So yeah, sometimes man. you got to, like Andy Dufresne, got to crawl through 500 yards of shit to come out clean on the other side. Yeah. So. Yeah. As much as I hated that we, situation, I'll still... It's right when I first met you, yes. too, my friend. Yes. Well, I was going to say, was that when you... What were you, do, you doing career-wise? 
Career wise, at 2010, we yeah. were finishing up my movie, my horror movie. Mm, okay. um, well, it actually was done. We sold it to Netflix in 2010, okay. and that was right around when the the marriage ended. Right. And then I was doing just odd jobs, and then getting over to mm. Geek Nation, where I met you. Yeah. And then so you guys would so all so say far. you're better off today than in 2010. Hell's yeah, by a, m- well, I a was, million miles. Yeah. I guess I was in the tech industry then, so I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I'm having more fun now. I was say, I'm certainly happier now. I'm happier yeah. now. What about you, Roxy? Because yeah. uh, I know that was like, what, yeah, 10 years? Uh, so in 2009, I graduated high school. So, th- I mean, I was in obviously a very, very different position. In yeah. two th- 2010, I always forget. Yeah. 2010, I was an acting major film minor at USC. Fine um my mom passed away the next year, so my right. mom was really yeah. sick. So I was actually a commuter student um, living in L.A., flying back and forth in 2010 every week from Boston to Los Angeles. Wow. So it was definitely a That's very crazy. Yeah, you did a, that, right? it was a very yeah. different time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because she would have killed me if I dropped out. Um, yeah, so, and well. that was like the only compromise. So, um, yeah, it was. I was like on so many drugs. You guys know I've been open about my past. Not like fun drugs, like not not good drugs. Yeah. And was super, super in like such a dark hole. Um, mm. I, I honestly don't, it's crazy when people ask me about it because I'll talk about it as much as anybody wants, but I don't remember really because mm. I was like so, so fucked up. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I know I was in definitely a worse place, but I don't even like have that many distinct memories yeah. of that time in my life at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and on that really fun note, Cody, <laughs> 2010. <laughs> oh boy. Um, Top that, bitch. Nope. I was. Uh, <laughs> I graduated high school that year, <laughs> and uh, I had hopes and dreams. Alex. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alex, where were you? Yeah, good, I good was time. a junior. Really, in really high good school. timing, Cody. Wow. You guys are high school and, uh, learning how to play music better and stuff. Wow. Mm. And, and doing bands. good impressions, apparently. What's up, it's your boy Dorian? I was in Underoos in 2010. I was still young. What's up, you were in under Dorian? what? Underoos. So tell him, tell him, Alex. What's an underoos? underoos? Oh, it's this thing that uh, kids used to wear in the '80s. That's like a little. It, it was like a, a superhero like underwear, stuff. But superhero, so, yeah. So yeah, you would have like Star Wars little like underwear and then a little top. Star Wars superhero, all of the things. Yeah, I would wear Sold Superman underoos. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's it. My that's favorite it. kind of underoos. I like that Alex and Cody were just circling. Just circle That's in what, the uh, yeah. We can keep highlighting this if you want. Uh, <laughs> wow, I really hope that this is when Trisha Helfer decided to tune into the show oh, and see yeah. what we were talking totally. about. She's like, what the F am I getting myself into? Don't worry, Trisha. We will definitely talk more Van Helsing and Battlestar and Lucifer and all that stuff right after this commercial. We're coming back again with Trisha Helfer. Thank you so much to John Roca for joining us. Thank you. John, where can everybody keep up with you? At the Roca Says. That's all. Thank you, everyone, so much. Justin Timberlake, that's right. Justin Timberlake. Yes. She's the one in the cute panties. That's right. How could you forget that? Yeah, yeah. That's right. No offense, no offense, no offense, no offense. (laughs) (laughs) I just remember they said Stanford. That's all I remember.
fucking dog at the bullshit. God damn it. Hey everyone, this is John Roga, John Roga, John Roga, John Roga. Oh, yeah, it's out. <laughs> and I'm gonna beat that ass. Beat that ass. I want some candy ass! I want your ass. Jesus. 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 Who gives a fuck? Wow. Welcome back to Collider Live. Trisha Helfer in studio right now. Oh and boy, Welcome. are we excited for you. <laughs> we all love you from completely different fandoms, so I'm excited to break that all down today. Uh, but Van Helsing is what we're here to talk about. And I got to say, that first episode you premiered in on this, mm. you were so eerie. And <laughs> yeah. you did such an amazing job. I heard you say that there wasn't that much time from when you were cast to when you actually shot. What was that period of time like? How long was that? Uh, I can't remember exactly, probably about a week. Um, sometimes you're cast and it's literally like the next day you're you're going. Sometimes you have more, you know, a little bit more time, maybe a month or something. But TV runs fast, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, but you have a, an iconic character. Usually when you're cast, you're not pay taking on the mantle of a Dracula-type character. Like that True. Is, that's a huge one to undertake where you like, I have one week to figure out how to portray one of the biggest characters of all time or do you train your brain to just be like it's just another character just in their role it is you know um it was important to i ha i was aware of the show i hadn't seen all the episodes so you know it was important for me to to watch as many as i could in the beginning so i started started in the beginning in the first season um and then i talked with michael eckland who plays jacob and abraham on the show and i I've, I've done you'd worked with him i've worked with him before and uh, he said you got to check out season three episode eight you talked about there, and, and um, so little things like that help. If you think too much about you're playing Dracula, mm -hmm. and you're the first female Dracula, and all that, it can it can be limiting, because you can just sort of be paralyzing. Um, and then you just want to make it your own, and, and look at, you know, I looked up the history of Dracula, you know, the Bram Stokers, I actually haven't read it. I bought mm -hmm. it for my Christmas reading. It's a um, little scary. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's Darina's world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Darina just, oh, yeah, that's favorite. your thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. But I didn't have time prior to. Right, right. And and, um, and then really just trying to fit in with the tone of the show. Speaking you know? of being the first female Dracula, what is? how did you bring that into the character? How does that change the character and the way that you move, speak, um, interact with people? Does it at all? I didn't want to make it about 
that, I think the most important thing for me was, sorry, I'm taking out my earrings. No, that's okay. Right. No, no, poking me with these yeah. headsets. I get it. <laughs> Dumb also, idea. We complain <laughs> about these all the time, so yeah. you're good. Also, yeah. just showing them off because they're so pretty. I oh, love those. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to make too much of it in terms of, oh, it's, it's female and how can we make that? I mean, the show is is about Vanessa Van Helsing, mm-hmm. so it's already a very female-centric show and, and female um, empowerment show, right? Because she's, she's a badass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, they had introduced also Kia and Nicole, Jack and Violet, mm-hmm. this season. Um, it, you know, uh, Kelly was pregnant, so she couldn't complete the season, and they introduced these two young, kick-ass women. So to me, it just sort of fit that, that Dracula was going to be female. Um, my biggest thing is I didn't want to make her look va 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 voom. Right. You know, I, was I that did. on the table? <clears throat> no, point? it wasn't. And I was sort of expecting it mm-hmm. in some way. And and when I first had my discussions with the hair and makeup team, who were communicating, of course, with the production team, their idea was very uh, a little androgynous, mm-hmm. a little um, you know, a little bit more creature like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that that I was like, okay, great, we're all on the same page. Were you concerned that it was going to be the va 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 boom because of past experiences you've had, or just that's the way Hollywood operates, or it, why? That's so much of the way Hollywood operates, right? Yeah. Um, and but knowing this show wasn't a, you know, wasn't didn't lend itself to tits and ass, so to speak, right? right. Yeah. That uh, I, I I felt I was in safe hands. Was you never know. Was this exciting for you for that reason? Because you obviously are a beautiful woman, like, and you played so many, you know beautiful sexy roles and Dracula is one of my favorite characters obviously being a vampire fan uh, I love the look of it uh, of her right I, I love that you're kind of more of like 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 you said androgynous but animalistic as well mm-hmm. like did you have any input there as to like how not just how you were going to approach the character but the look of it as well like are, were you excited to finally be able to do a character like this since you've been playing more like beautiful roles before oh absolutely yeah and and it's it just sort of helps you get into Hair and makeup and wardrobe, everything plays a part, mm-hmm. right? I remember when I was doing uh, Battlestar Galactica and it, the Pegasus episodes where the glamorous number six was watching mm-hmm. Gaius talk to, uh, you have to know the show to. Uh, oh, I yeah, know. we do. Okay, yeah, yeah I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, talk <laughs> to Gina, right who had yeah. been, you know, beaten up and mm-hmm. gang raped and tortured and everything. And, and when we were shooting on the same day and we were shooting the glamorous six first and then Gina, and the makeup artist would. She's like, you're just you're changing in my t- chair. Mm-hmm. You're not even on set yet, and you're changing in my chair. My physicality. Uh-huh. I started when it, when I was becoming Gina. You know, the the makeup strips off, and mm-hmm. the wig, and the and the curls, and all of a sudden the bruises start coming in, and the and I just would start sinking and and becoming smaller in her chair, and that's you know s- so similar with with Dracula. Mm-hmm. I think it would have informed if I had long curly locks and mm-hmm. red lips and uh, false eyelashes. It would have affected a little bit how you play the character. Mm-hmm. And so it helped. I, I, I felt a little creature-like mm-hmm. with that hair and makeup. Uh, I mean, how could you not, right? Your, your eyes are blacked out with contacts. Yeah. You're contoured. To, you know, you're whited out and then contoured. And, and the hair was basically gone. It was just slicked back. Almost goat-like, like like a Baphomet or something like that. Yeah. We actually joked that in the beginning, because she's sort of being born out of this portal, mm-hmm. that it was sort of afterbirth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess that. And yeah. I don't think my next episode in the season finale, they necessarily wanted the hair similar Um Going forward, uh, the hair will be different. So you just mentioned the season finale, which is on this Friday. Yes. But when you say going forward, what does that mean? That means if it goes forward, mm. um, there will be, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's been, of course, you talk, you know, if we're going forward, you know, what storylines and things like that. And and I know there was some discussion of, yeah, we'd like the hair to change a little bit. Well, mm-hmm. it's taken them uh, four seasons to get to this big bad. I would assume that what they're hoping to do right now is use this season four to set up season five with you as a, a series regular on this. Is that what you're hoping for as well? Yeah, uh, d- definitely. And it, it certainly is lending itself to that, right? Um, one One of my issues I have with filming in general and TV is quite often if you're only one or two episodes, you're not privy to the rest of the scripts. Mm. So I didn't know what the hell was happening on the entire season. 
except for those two episodes that I wrote or was in. So you didn't know between those two? No. And I, when the show started airing, I was filming, I was away. And so I've just recently, I, I caught the first kind of a few episodes up to mine. And then just the other day, I caught the rest of the episodes. Because again, I was away filming a, a homework film. And uh, I stayed up till three o'clock in the morning and I was watching everything up to the finale, kind of going, oh my God, if I had. They're talking about me all the time. It's like <laughs> the elders are, they're summoning me and Michaela's being killed. Like, the, you know, I mean, I knew that Christopher had, um, he was made into an elder for the, for the summoning process mm-hmm. or whatever it's called. So I knew about him because that was in my episode. But everything leading up to it. Um, would that have informed decisions and choices you would have made as an actor if you had read those scripts and then? I think so. You know, I've talked to other actors about it, and some say they don't really want to know because if you're not there. But for me, it's more about if your character's talked about or certain things that they're doing. And and certainly in Van Helsing, they were doing things to summon Dracula. Mm -hmm. And you, when I'm seeing it, I'm I'm seeing more of the world that they're creating. And to me, that would help inform. I don't know necessarily for that next episode that I'm in this this coming Friday, the finale. but yeah, on a in general, I would much prefer. I'm one of the actors that would much prefer to read all the scripts, even if you're not in it. This is kind of a strange question, but are you allowed to ask? Like, if you are shooting the last one, I know that it's probably because you're a newcomer on a show that's up, been running for a while, and you don't want to rock the boat, and you don't want to be uh, a pain in the butt or whatever it is. But are you allowed to say, as a performer, it'd be really helpful if I could see the other scripts, or are you not allowed to say that? Oh yeah, I mean, it, and it all depends on it depends on each production, how uh, how tight they keep things. With with the fourth season, me being in the seventh episode and then the thirteenth, I did. It was a little bit harder. And going back, I should have I should have asked, and they would have been cool about it. They're mm-hmm. a very open, great production team. It's probably um, nerve wracking though to ask for like anything. I feel like it. It can be, yeah. But I would absolutely. Um, it's been kind of a little bit of a learning thing for even when I was doing Lucifer, it was 17 out of 22. The first time I wasn't in one, I didn't get the script. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I went to production. And I'm like, guys, I want to read the script. But I was talking to a, a Derek Hughes, a, a writer friend of mine, just the other day. And I asked him. And he goes, no, again, it depends on how. And he does a lot of the CW shows. And they're really tight because they have a fan base that like is wanting to know every yeah. little thing. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he says, no, if you ask, then you should be able to be given it. But they assume, a lot of times productions assume the actors don't want to read it because they, if they're not in it, they don't want to waste their time. And also you're so, very busy. They don't, they, I'm sure they think that you're off working on other projects, which you are. Yeah, <laughs> but it, you know, it, it just depends on the actor. So I think you have to, that's something that I've learned is I have to communicate better. I expect that I'd get the scripts that I'd be you'd want to read it, but there's a whole bunch of actors that don't want to read it. So and was it different for you? Because on Battlestar Galactica, you were so you were such a huge character in that show. Were you aware of the storyline going forward? Were you getting scripts for that? And is it different now? Because Battlestar was really for me. It was really the start of when we started talking about these shows on social media. Mm-hmm. So has that changed for you going to from Battlestar to Lucifer and then now to Van Helsing? Um. You know, with Battlestar, there was no social media. Yeah. Twitter yeah. wasn't around yet. That's right, yeah. Because we ended in 2008. Right. Well, well I was 2009, air, airing in 2009, I think. Well, because I was going to ask something related to that because that wasn't around. Uh, and when I love the show. It's one of my favorite series of all Same. time. And I feel like the ending, uh, just talking with my friends, some of us loved it, some of us hate it, right? And so I'm curious as to what your thoughts on it personally as a fan of the show. Like, what did you think of the ending? And also, how do you think that is, is that scary to think about? It's like, oh, I'm glad we didn't deal with that because now everybody has every opinion on like the Game of Thrones ending, the Watchmen ending. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of another, right? It's like, if social media had been around, I think the show would have blown up more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, yes, you are faced with the immediate. You still get the interaction. It's just not immediate. And, you know, um, it, back to your question first, yes, I, I got every script. And in uh, Lucifer, I got every script aside from you, the first one. I was, right, in there right. I was like, no, no, give them to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Uh, 
yeah, I mean, I like to read them, and I, mm-hmm. I think it informs. With with Battlestar, it was the most collaborative show I've ever been on. Mm. Um, Why was that? Just the the team. Um, they were a, a, the production team, the directors, um, the actors. It all just you know every show has its own kind of um, family unit, mm-hmm. right? Some get along better than others, some don't, some are more communicative, some are more, you know, keep to your own position. And Battlestar was just, everybody wanted to talk about it. Everybody was really invested in the show. And so we we discussed like every nitty gritty. Um, Lucifer also is very collaborative, Mm -hmm. uh, different type of show. But um, yeah, it, it kind of, Lost my train of thought there. That's okay but because we I, asked you like three questions. So yeah. yeah, I was like, wait, now I'm gonna now I gotta go back <laughs> to that one. Um, it was just about the finale. Looking yes. back, how you felt. You know, it's it's harder to um, disassociate when you're in it and you're filming. Um, you're never gonna make everybody happy, mm-hmm. right? And I think the actors all pretty much liked it. Mm-hmm. I liked it, but it, because it wasn't wasn't all wrapped up in a nice red bow and mm-hmm. and it wasn't all just everyone was destroyed it kind of hit this middle place and and I'm actually watching it now mm-hmm. I'm doing I'm doing a podcast yeah mm-hmm. called Battlestar Galacticast and we just with Mark st- yeah yeah with Mark Bernard yeah. and we just started our third season we taped it last week the first two episodes with um and we had Ron Moore on mm-hmm. who created the show as our guest mm-hmm. and uh there's so many things I forget that I'm actually looking forward to now kind of it's been such a span of time and through doing this podcast and the rewatching of the series it's I'll be interested to see if I have more of a fan reaction to the finale than what I remember because mm. what I remember is being on set and crying when it was somebody's last scene mm. and and they were taking you know there was an auction house that was taking our props and going to sell them and they had figured out if if this phone wasn't you, was this was the last scene, even though there's two more weeks of filming, that it would literally be ripped out of the actor's hand as the scene was, you know, like moving on to the next scene. Right. And so there was there was all these emotions going on, and it was very – so I think for the actors and the team involved, it's hard to disassociate from that. And, you know, you like the episode more because of that, right? Um, so I'm really curious now going back when we get to the fourth season – of rewatching the show if I have any other reaction. Right. I'm also curious how you feel because you are diving back into that world so heavily about the talks of, they're not calling it a reboot, mm-hmm. but uh, a reimagining or however right. they want to phrase what they're doing with Battlestar right now. Any thoughts on them bringing it back, on possibly uh, wanting to be involved or what you're hoping to see on the show? You know, um, when the news first broke, and there's been there's been uh, hints of it all along. Of, yes. Of I think uh, who was doing it. Um, there was a few different directors that were going to make a theatrical. Right. Um, and then it just always came and went and came and went. Our team never had theatrical rights. We only had television rights. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when this one came along with Sam. Uh, Ishmael? Yes. I, yep. I can never pronounce the last name properly. Ishmael, who's brilliant, right? Um, it did feel like a little bit of a punch to the gut because you kind of went, oh, this is this is serious. Mm. And he's going to do a good rendition of it, whatever. Um, and we're not involved. So it did kind of feel like, ugh, yeah. too soon. You know, but it's, it's not. It's 15 years ago, 10 years ago, whatever, that it went off the air. And um, there was a chain of a text chain that went around through the actors and a lot of the actors were like how dare they do it? like it it, it it did hit people quite hard mm, really wow. and i think because the show is still airing like it's on amazon prime it's on bbc mm-hmm. you know it's it, it, it has on a Netflix. cult following that is continues yeah to and that's grow. only expanding yeah it is only expanding and, and i come across so many people that said you know i watched it it was like i watched it with my parents when i was a teenager and now i've got kids and i'm showing it to them or that type of thing, and or people that just never saw it originally, and now are seeing it, and so it feels like it's still alive. Right. So that's what feels weird about it. But yeah. uh, funny enough, on the podcast, and we had Ron Moore on in the season finale of season one, right. and Mark asked him, 
would you ever consider, and this was you know, a year ago or whatever, would you ever consider rebooting, you know, bringing Galactica back? And Ron said no. Mm. He said you know, he's, he loved it. From the beginning, when we first started, he said he saw it as a five-year run. And that's what we did. Mm. And he said, no, you know, I feel like I did that world. I, I loved it. But that was my story. And, you know, he's moved on to obviously Outlander yeah. and now, uh, you know, um, all in um, it's this new show on um, Apple mm. TV, uh, All Mankind. Or all oh, for, for All Mankind. For All Mankind. Yeah, yeah. That's like, you know, amazing. They're filming their second season right now. Um, you know, so he, he right from his mouth, he said no. And then cut to a year later, we hear this news, and then to hear in the press that you know that he that Sam had talked to Ron, and you know they talked it over, and Ron gave him his blessing and everything. I'm like, who am I to say, you know, poo poo it, right? Right. right? What do you think changed his mind, Ron's mind? Uh, well, Ron's not involved. I know, but giving him his blessing, what do you think made him say, best of luck? You know, if I could be a fly on the wall in that conversation, yeah. right? <laughs> Maybe Sam came in with a vision that Ron was like, okay, this is going to complement ours, not, you know, Sam came in, I think, from what I've heard, as a fan of the show. And, and, and you know, I'm, I'm sure, again, I might be speaking of turn because I don't know. Um, I don't know exactly what the show's going to be about, yeah. but it's supposed to be, you know, in the same world, but focusing on different things. But I would think that if he's a fan of the show, there would be room and opportunities for you guys to possibly come back or some pop in yeah, even exactly. what, episode by episode. And would you be interested in, in something like that? And do you think how do you think the rest of the cast would feel about that? Yeah, you know, I think it depends. I would probably liken it to Richard Hatch. Mm hmm. And he was a vocal opponent against um, our, re our, our reimagining That's of the right. show. And he had been trying for years to get the show uh, started up again and a continuation of where the original Galactica mm -hmm. was. And so he was, he was very upset about it. Um, and then Ron sat down with him and talked him through the show. And then I think this the miniseries had aired and, and, and Richard saw the show. And then he, he they developed, or Ron developed this character that was different for him to play, Tom mm -hmm. Zarek, and a great role. Mm -hmm. And he came in and he killed it. And he then became part of the team and, and, and part of the family. And um, so I think something like that could happen mm -hmm. where, you know, I think most of the cast, if, if, you know, Ron's given his blessing, if the show comes out and it's, it's an interesting take on the world and, and it's done well. And there was, there was a character that made sense, either your own character um, or something like they did with, with Richard, Richard Hatch, yeah. mm -hmm. then I think it would make sense. And I think most of us would jump at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a couple of times, and I have to ask you about it because I'm like the biggest diehard Lucifer fan on mm -hmm. the planet. I can't even tell you how much I love that show. <laughs> uh, but I heard that you are coming back and I, Anything you can tell me about that? I know you had your last day on set in October. Mm -hmm. uh, you wrapped shooting then. Anything you can talk about that experience or what we're going to be seeing from you? Because I have wanted you to come back but had no idea how you could possibly come back. It was funny because I was there was a Lucifer convention in Los Angeles um, shortly before they started filming the season. And she started it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with with, with my it. love, I, I say that I started hashtag Save Lucifer. I, I feel like I did that. We owe you. Yeah. We yeah. owe you. It was. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, and I was asked, you know, is mom or Charlotte coming back? And I said, to my knowledge, no. And I didn't lie, because it's not mom or Charlotte that is back in this episode. Um, Ooh, you interesting know, loophole. I, I hope, maybe, you know, they've yeah. got some episodes left. Who knows? Um, I'd love to come back in some form, um, cause seeing it's the last season. Mm -hmm. um, but when they, they sent me this script and they, they gave me the offer, I was like, well, wait, this is, I'm not either mom or Charlotte? What? So without giving too much away, it's basically, it's a really fun episode. Uh, I haven't seen anything cut. I haven't done any ADR for it, so I don't know. But is this the 1940s yes. episode? Damn, it is. <laughs> we had so much fun shooting it, and I play a small role in it. But I, again, I won't give away too much. But uh, you know, Lauren and Leslie Ann, everybody's tweeted picture, or Instagram pictures of in the 1940s garb, and and it's a musical episode. It's it's a storytelling. 
and it is really charming and really funny. Um, and I was just so happy to go back and get to play uh, with this team again in an alternate, uh, you know, everybody's, not everybody, but most everybody is playing somebody else. And uh, so it wasn't just me that's right. playing somebody else. And Kevin Alejandro is hysterical in this episode. Like, he just shines. Um, you're going to die laughing. I'm going to die see. no matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't wait for it to come back. Uh, you did mention that it is a, a smaller role. And another thing that you have called a smaller role is your role in Bombshell, but mm-hmm. a very important role. Mm. Well, I just wanted to know about your decision to take on that movie. It obvious it's my favorite movie of the year. Um, I I just it blew my mind with what they were able to do. But did you pick it because it spoke to you, or did you uh, love the character, or why why Bombshell for you? Well, it's I mean it's a minuscule role. Like you blink three times right. and you miss me. Mm-hmm. Um, but to me, it wasn't about that. I mean, it's Jay Roach, mm. it's Charles Randolph, it's Charlize, it's John Lithgow, it's Mac Margot, you know, yeah. uh, Nicole Kidman. The cast was great. Um, a war, you know, Oscar nominee, Oscar winning uh, prosthetics artist, not for my character, but for, <laughs> right. for Charlize and John and 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 so many others. Um, it, it was a story, obviously, that I had heard about in the news, and. Um, it just was it was more for me about about working with Jay um, and and I've seen Allison, you know, on CNN. I've watched her show. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I actually hadn't heard. She has a Vanity Fair piece, an article that she wrote that just came out, I think, last Friday or something like that. And in talking to uh, Jay on set about it, he'd gotten to know her quite well and said what a wonderful person she was. And and. I actually, I actually had to audition for it. Mm. You did, and, wow. Yeah, and there's three little, like, there's two little nonverbal, like, it, it's just a look, mm-hmm. right? And then there's one, I think I say one line, Roger, and I'm on the phone with Charli- uh, Megan Kelly. And it's, the reason that I was like, okay, you know, it's a little bit of an ego, I was like, okay, I've got three looks in the film, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> one word. But there's so many of these, these small cameos in it and it's integral to the story right because it's it's told from Megan Kelly's perspective and she really was the the kind of you know the the Roger Isles team was trying to get her to defend him and Gretchen Carlson's team was trying to get her to say you know her story or to side with the women and there definitely was I mean it's been proven there definitely was a toxic environment at Fox News Mm -hmm. right and that's what the, the case was all about. And um, so it, Megan, hearing from all these women along the way that had since left and gone, and women that she knew and respected, each of them played a part in getting her to stand up and say her truth, which in effect affected the, the outcome of the case, mm-hmm. right? And the firing of Roger Ailes and the ability to say, no, this is not okay. Mm-hmm. This is not okay in the workplace. And it has started, you know, affecting other places, hopefully. So, and it's not just Hollywood. It's not just journalism. It's mm-hmm. it's restaurants. It's, mm-hmm. you know, accountants offices. Mm-hmm. It's all over. It's yeah. not just Hollywood. And um, so to me, that's what was interesting about it. And, and uh yeah. Did you see the movie when it was finished? Have I did. I yet? actually went to uh, the, the premiere, premiere the other night. Yeah. What did you think? I thought they did a great job with it. Yeah. I mean, it's powerful. It's um, it's done. You know, it's 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 not cinematically like this. You know, Game of Thrones something right. or whatever. Right. But it, it's just it's it's newsroom style. It's it's set in the newsroom and it tells a story. And I think the performances um, are great. I mean, John Lithgow is. He's amazing in it. He is. He really. He's. He's just amazing in general. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're but, just like, oh, just yeah. the heebie-jeebies. To did you get to see any of them on set or, or talk with any of the Charlize or Margot, John? No, or you actually. Were in and out. Um. Yeah, I was in and out. I mean, granted, it was three different days that I was there. Oh, really? For well, those yeah, yeah. little parts, but um. I, no, I mean, aside from Charlie's was on screen when I came in to do one of my things, but mm-hmm. in a different part of the, I just saw her on Video Village and 
I saw them pulling something out of her nose with tweezers. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and it turns out she had spacers. Like, the, that was one of her prosthetics. She oh. had spacers in her nose to make her nose look more like. Just the thought so of that no- makes me want to Yeah, see. the entire yeah. movie with, yeah. like, spacers yeah. in your nostrils. Yeah. I mean, well, you look you look sort of uncomfortable as Dracula as well. I don't know what, <laughs> how that, I mean, even the eyes, like, the contacts or whatever would freak me out. Yeah, the contacts, they're, it's they get on your nerves, yeah. yeah. And the white eye, I was thinking like, wow, damn, that I, I wonder when you wipe off that at the end of the day with a makeup remover. <laughs> oh, it doesn't come off with makeup remover. Oh, no. What are you going to no, do? it's about an hour plus process to get it taken oh off at night. God. What about to put it on? Wow. It's probably, well, the hair was so easy because they yeah. just slicked it back with this goop. Right. Mm-hmm. But um, that took about four washings to get out mm-hmm. at night. Oh, my God. And then the makeup probably takes about an hour and a half to two hours to put on and probably about 45 minutes to take off. Because um, it's it's just, it's made to stay on, right? Mm-hmm. And they would have to, I forget what the name of the thing is for my eyebrows. It's this glue basically that they glue your eyebrows down to try and hide the hair and then they paint over it mm-hmm. and then with the eyelashes doesn't that to try rip off though when you oh. uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's not, that, that's why they have it's basically alcohol, pure alcohol that they take it off with mm. fun and um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you just gotta sit there kind of with it just you know sitting on your eye for a while and then let it dissolve a little bit and, and the eyelashes too they were um, it's a really intense type of a glue type thing well what will make it all worth it is if everybody goes and watches van helsing guys this friday the finale so go check uh trisha helfer out in that friday december 20th 10 9 central for the finale of van helsing thank you so much for coming in we really appreciate it darina the most evil of them all mark riley thank you to john roker from before cody hall alex marzonia i'm roxy i'll see you guys tomorrow morning for collider live